Sharkies are top of the table in the rugby league. South are dead last, but JD is safe for now. Giants and Cats undefeated in the AFL. Do they need a captain's challenge? NBA play-in starts this week, only a couple of days away. Celtics and Nugs look like the teams to beat in the East and the West, respectively. The IPL's hit, uh, heating up. Coley back in form. Big Maxi, Maxi, not so much, but there are some Aussies doing well. Plus, the EPL and Champions League uh, are really heating up. And a huge final round with one of the biggest events in UFC history taking part today. UFC 300. Alex Pareda is still the light heavyweight champ, plus all the uh, other big fights from that. The Masters going into Sunday. Um, looks like a pretty tight race, plus a bit of F1 Japan. This is on the Esky an Aussie sports podcast. We like our Aussie sports. We like our US sports. like to have a bit of a laugh and a dribble. Uh, check us out on these socials. We do have timestamps on YouTube. You can skip to the sports that you like or do not like. I'd like to shout a beer to start the show. Sean, who have you got? Yes, I've got Jordan Mylata. Um, he uh, gets paid, yeah. essentially, again. Uh, so this is his third deal. So his second deal after his rookie deal. Um, so he had uh, some decent money. Um, on his last one, he's got a slight bump up, I, I think, in this one because it's he's got a three year, 66 mil deal. I think his last contract was a 21.5 mil average. This will take it to 22. Um, but whether you know, front loaded, back loaded, who knows? But an average of 22 mil throughout this. Uh, so big, big props to him uh, as a guy that. Uh, couldn't play rugby. Too big. As they say, too big. Mm, apparently. Yeah, to go over to States and be one of the massive success stories for Australians um, playing in that sport uh, at a position that I don't think any other Australians played in the NFL. Not at a high level, that's No, for sure. I don't think so. We've mm. had a few defensive ends, a few running backs, but nothing to this kind of calibre. So big props to him. I did check it. He was the fourth highest earning behind... Um, Cameron Smith and Daniel Ricciardo, uh, with number one being Ben Simmons. Mm-hmm. Um, he's twenty-two Aussies in, in world sport. <laughs> yeah, Aussies in world sport. He's twenty-two mil. Is is still fairly shy of Cameron Smith's, who was thirty. But I think Ricciardo's live th- money probably helped a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I also think Ricciardo's numbers uh, were more because this was an article from last year. I couldn't find anything relevant recently. Was so that thirty-six mil I think was his McLaren number, not. Probably what he's getting mm-hmm. at um, RB Racing now. So potentially he's in the top three. He could be third. Yeah. Wow. Massive achievement. Yeah, Huge. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Bet on himself. Yeah. South Sydney Junior. Yeah. Time to lose some weight or maybe a bit too mm-hmm. slow to, mm-hmm. to be playing rugby league at a high level. And yeah, definitely uh, made the right call going over the States. Exactly. Picked mm. super late in the draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, essentially had to walk on and learn the position at, with the Eagles. But the, the faith in him have been. Uh, well, well backed, and uh, he's definitely been awesome in that space for them. And we'll mm. lock down that left tackle spot going forward for the foreseeable future. So I'm not sure he, when that deal kicks in, but I think a three extension, it's an extension. So I'm assuming it's after this season. So you'll be able to be at least season maybe. Yeah, another mm. um, three years through that. So pretty good for him. What about you, Peppy? I'm going to shout a nice, tasty equine beverage to the pride of Jenny. Uh, we don't normally talk a whole lot of horse racing uh, on this show, but I uh, don't mind keeping an eye on them. And this was a particularly interesting race. The Queen Elizabeth Stakes yesterday at Ranwick. Never seen a horse go out this hard and hold on. Uh, there was at one stage in the race, probably about a, a, a K to go, Declan Bates had it dead set 30 lengths ahead. Uh, incredible scenes. It managed to hold on by well, probably a good 10 lengths uh, ahead of uh, some of the shorter price favourites. It was paying about sixes or sevens, depending on when you got on. Uh, and one of the more extraordinary things that you'll see uh, in horse racing in general. So if you haven't, check it out. Uh, Pride of Jenny winning the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. And uh, yeah, watch the horse skull a beer, courtesy of the Esky, responsibly, of course. <laughs> We should have a couple of horses a bit now. Yeah, we? a few. I, I think they're generally me shouting uh, <laughs> the horses. <laughs> Definitely uh, like, to, like to keep an eye on uh, on the ponies. But, uh, yeah, that one was do- doing the rounds on social media, yeah. if you will, uh, even for the for the people that are less uh, um, equine inclined. That's it. And Monks? Yes. So this week I am shouting Sky Nicholson a beer. Um, did I say and new? 
that's a UFC thing or is that a boxing thing as well? I was saying. All right. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. And you. So she is the new uh, WBC women's mm-hmm. uh, featherweight champion uh, of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, she beat Sarah Mafford um, mm-hmm. during the week. Um, sorry, yeah, in Las Vegas. I just had brain stroke. Baby something. brain. <laughs> yeah, baby brain. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so just yeah, huge props to her becoming uh, one of the – few Australian boxing champions at the moment. Um, I know we've been following the Sioux families the last couple couple months mm-hmm. as they um, rise up the ranks and uh, for title shots. And, um, yeah, so just props to her. Her career up as a professional boxer is 10-0 and 0 at the moment. So yeah. great start. She finished her amateur career at 107-32. and 32. So um, very active. She won a uh, Gold in the 2018 Gold Coast uh, Commonwealth Games for what a Commonwealth Games worth these <laughs> days. <laughs> Big gold medal. One, one more Common Games gold medal than any of us have. That's it. That's it. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, um, being professional pro, won't see in the Olympics um, yep. coming around. So, but yeah, huge props for her becoming world champion. Well, it's massive for her career. The timing mm. as well. Uh, you know, we were following the the Sioux fight a few weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, losing to Fundora. But there is an Aussie world champion in uh, in boxing, and probably maybe not getting the uh, the the media spotlight that she deserves. It's a massive achievement. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sky and Nicholson, enjoy your beer, courtesy of uh, of Monks on the Esky. Which is, uh, I did see Nikita Zhu, I think, actually has a fight. Yeah, he's got a uh, – because yeah, they were advertising yeah, uh, during the uh, April UFC. 24th, so yeah. that's next Wednesday. So it's Wednesday, 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 Wednesday before or Anzac Day. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. not a bad night to be having a having a fight. Do you know much about his opponent? Have no, you that there no. Or? Well, we'll talk about it next pod, yeah, I suppose, yeah, yeah. but keep yeah, an eye, eye out does. there for Nikita Zhu. Want to do some follow up mops? Yes. Handed out a few last well, a fortnight ago. The janitor convention, a few yeah. mops going out. Well, it's interesting because uh, we we um, had a vague details of some of these stories, and I guess they've only gotten worse, and now have potential consequences coming mm-hmm. out of them. So, uh, I think we'll start with um, is it Ippi Mizahara? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so Shohei Atani's a former interpreter. Uh, has been charged with stealing over sixteen million dollars from Otani, not the four point five that he had a <laughs> debt, but sixteen mil. Um, and essentially, the charge is bank fraud for transferring the money from Otani's account um, to the alleged illegal sports book. So, uh, through this investigation, they found out that he's placed over nineteen thousand wages between twenty twenty one twenty twenty four. So that you know that's a casual su- weekend for you, Peps, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What's not casual for you would be the average wager being twelve k. So uh, he averaged a wa- wager of just under thirteen thousand uh, dollars, with his largest being one hundred and sixty. Uh, he had a total losing bets of $182 million. That's crazy. With, I think, wow. uh, was it 142 mil uh, winnings? So essentially, he's 40 mil 40 in the million hole. In the shit. Uh, so it seems like over time, he's been nicking this money to pay back that loan um, as the illegal bookie kind of gave him, uh, I, I guess, uh, it's. It's not like a re- well, I guess it's like a home loan re- repayments <laughs> and giving him schedule, re- yeah, <laughs> yeah, schedule repayments over time to be able to pay it, pay it back. And, and you know, the, there's quotes going back and forth between them, uh, text messages, etc. About you, you know, I'm good for it. I'll get the money and I'll get it back to you. So you know, definitely he's taking the money. It's confirmed he's taking the money from Otani to to place these bets, and he's been doing this over, over a long term. Um, Do they know how long that is? Uh, oh, December, December, 20, December 21, 21 to January 24. Yeah. So be interesting to see when Otani started playing in the US as well. That's only like d- two and a bit years. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's a few bets. <laughs> yes. Um, so obviously, you're degenerate. Uh, interesting thing, no bets, of course, on baseball. Um, yep. So I think they've been making him out to look like the bad guy and it kind of seems the case. Uh, I think... Otani's essentially in the clear. The worst thing for him is maybe he was trying to be a friend and, mm-hmm. yes, was sending, mm-hmm. you know, it was like, yeah, do whatever you need, take the money out of my account, send it to him, pay your debts off. Like, you know, fix your problem, get, a, get fix your debt. 
Um, Because that's obviously where the source of money was coming from and Mm. why the bookie let this guy have a loan. At worst, uh, it seems more likely they're going to, of course, push that he's just been taking the funds without Otani's knowledge and just been stealing them. Mm. Um, And, you know... I'd like to get to the position where I don't know notice sixteen million dollars disappearing, mm. um, yeah. <laughs> but of course the oh, Dan, 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 he backs it out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once, once Sean's worth nine hundred million, just pinch sixteen million. Yeah, exactly. He won't notice. Yeah, but um, Danny's of course worth shitloads of money. So mm. yeah, they've only of course picked it up by this investigation, and um, by all accounts he'll be in the clear for this. But yeah, I think it was crazy. I, I think the magnitude, everyone was like, mm. oh, yeah, that's a big debt he's got into, the 4.5 million yeah, figure. four times that. Yeah, but yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. four times that, but then also gambling, um, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars across two and yeah, a half years is, crazy. is a crazy, crazy amount. So, And the, um, f- the frequency of it, I just crunched the numbers on that 19,000, yeah. mm. that's like, uh, it's like 27 a day-ish. <sighs> yep. Yeah, and you know the Japanese so yeah, well, like a gamble, like, but maybe like a weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like they like to bet, but this is probably out of hand. And I guess he had the the funds to get really deep into a hole, and uh, maybe he went way, way too over the edge. So that twenty something a day, he was gambling three hundred twenty thousand a day. Mm. If his average bet was twelve grand, yeah. quick mass. It's, it's mental. Yeah, um, MOB would sort of hate this because mm-hmm. we were speaking about the Otani uh, move and the amount of money that was going into it and the highly back ended deal and how they're really sort of uh, owning in on that on that Japanese market mm, yep. and now this obviously puts a, a big uh, sort of sour taste on uh, on that whole move. Yeah, I think at least this clears up some of it, so it's not you know any of the uh, conspiracy theories that. Atani was the degenerate doing all this and his interpreter's day in the fall it seems very much the the opposite of that and that's been cleared up um, but yeah like you say it's uh, it's not a great look but at least um, you know baseball Jesus is still free um, from this he can go away and still continue to be the face um, so yeah I think it's a pretty pretty crazy thing in the end um, hasn't really affected Otani. He has been hitting home runs uh, mm. and he also just tied the record for most home runs by a Japanese-born player the other day. So he's very close to breaking that record too. So um, hasn't affected his gameplay yet, yep. but like I said, he baseball's the least of his problems at the moment yep. and mm. uh, I think his legal team will take over and um, Izahara is looking at, uh, I think, a lengthy, lengthy jail sentence. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Top Edge. Join us in in, in the uh, comments there. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit of cricket just later on in the show, but uh, good to see Cam Bancroft uh, in the runs there in the county cricket. Keep knocking the door mm. down. That's what he needs to do. Just back on Izahara. Mm-hmm. Apparently he also purchased approximately 1,000 baseball cards uh-huh. um, worth or well, totaling 300-odd grand as well. So, yeah, not just a gambling. Baseball card, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rashi Rice got himself in a bit of strife last week uh, with uh, you know high speed um, incident. Uh, mm-hmm. Anything uh, come about from that? Yeah, well, it has been confirmed that he was one of the drivers. The Lamborghini, the Oris, um, uh, was rented in his name, and he was the only one meant to be driving that. It's confirmed he was driving that vehicle. So they've now charged him with eight different charges in this case, six of collision involving bodily bodily injury, one uh, causing serious bodily in serious bodily injury, so serious being the word, and then one count of aggravated assault. Mm. Um, reported he was doing 119 miles, which is about 191 kilometres prior to the crash. Um, so, you know, he's potentially facing suspension from the league, possibly paid leave, uh, maybe even a termination, if mm. um, depending on how far they go with the charges. But not looking good for him. Uh the driver of the Corvette also facing the same charges, and that turned out to be Teddy Knox, who's a cornerback for SMU. Uh. So um, he's also facing those. He's been suspended by the team for the future, and um, we'll have to you know, see these young fellas um, whether they can get back to playing football or um, if that's going to be it for them for a little while. Uh, any word on the victim? Are they I think okay? yeah. I think everyone it was okay. There was only um, uh, you know nothing life threat- threatening. It was just all serious injuries. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think we said it in the last body. Um, Rice kind of was cementing himself 
was wide receiver one. He was there, big, big year ahead going forward for him. Um, and then to throw it all away, mm. well, potentially throw it all potentially, away. Yeah, uh, hope you know for his sake, he's hoping that um, uh, there's probably big fines in place, maybe a suspended sentence, all that kind of stuff, community service, and mm. in, you know maybe miss half the season. I, th- I feel a little bit like that might be best case at this stage, but we'll see. Yeah, I think they're pretty serious injuries, hey? Like, yeah. it's, they're all stable. Yeah, but, uh, all stable, but, like, broken bones. Oh, 100%. Bones, so. I yeah. mean, yeah, you look at the charges involving serious bodily injury mm. and aggravated assault. I don't know yeah, how that's that falls into it, but yeah, um, sounds like it's all been pretty serious. Mm. Thinking of the victims, I think probably just as much as anyone. Mm. Yeah, and I think the legal... Um, yeah, probably come down pretty hard. Yes, uh, considering it's been a bit of a reoccurrence um, yeah. in the last, say, 24 months. So, yep. yeah. Well, um, and that's Mops. So Yeah, we'll keep an eye on uh, on how both those stories play out, but uh, definitely looks like uh, the Otani interpreters probably going to the big house for a little bit. Mm-hmm, definitely. All right, let's, uh, let's bring it back over here and let's talk a bit of footy. <laughs> Uh, Fortnite uh, in footy lot happens. We are currently watching the end of the Raiders Titans game, uh, and in it's in Gold Point. Point at the moment. So, not, not many people thought the Titans would uh, would be challenging the Raiders this this much, uh, given how well they played. Absolutely smacked uh, Parramatta mm. last week. Raiders gave up ten points with about six minutes to go. So. Uh, Classic fade, classic yes. Raiders. <laughs> uh, we won't c- cover. See, like, we get another draw like the other night. We won't cover last sure. week too much. Uh, what happened? Melbourne beat Brisbane. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roosters beat Dogs. Newcastle beat the Dragons in the one of the wettest games I think I've mm-hmm. ever seen. Yep. South woes continued, getting smacked by the Warriors. Manly had a really good win against Penrith. Uh, Dolphins had a win. Cowboys had a win. And as I mentioned, the Raiders had a win last week. Let's talk. Um, Round six, mm-hmm. we'll start with Thursday night and uh, the Chooks survived a late comeback from Newcastle coming out 22 to 20 winners. Ponga pretty good in the end of that. Yeah, Ponga really good. But about, about the other KP, the mm-hmm. KPP, Kai Pierce paul we spoke mm-hmm. about him in uh, in uh, our pre-season uh, preview and said, oh, look, we've heard good things about this, you know, big, big uh, edge edge back rower coming over from, uh, from the UK and that was probably his... Best game that he's put together so far, mm. 80 minutes, uh, a lot of run meters, a lot of tackle busts. Uh, definitely anyone that plays fantasy or super coach, keeping an eye on him. Yep. Uh, but the the biggest story out of this game was uh, was Joey Manu with, uh, with the number one on his back. 370 run meters, that is an NRL record. Also a try assist and 11 tackle busts to go along with it. So Teddy goes, uh, you know, yeah, unfortunately... Yeah, suffering a concussion last week, uh, his 10th documented. So, you know, the whole chat around concussion and and, uh, and Teddy and... Mm, double digits. Yeah, there. exactly. Uh, you know, he obviously needs to have the, the best sort of uh, medical advice coming around uh, uh, that aspect of his career. But uh, Joey absolutely uh, took the opportunity by the scruff of the neck and uh, and went out and, and had a, a blinder on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Titans of Jeff's... Beaten the Raiders, or was uh, that no? That was to go to that was that's to two go got to a good point. Point. The first period's mm. ended, and they're going in a second. Twenty so. apiece. We could have two draws <laughs> yes. this weekend. <laughs> um, all things aside, a healthy Teddy is he still number one for the Roosters? Yeah, I think so. I think because yeah. Manu, I think Manu's, a better question Manu's a better center than than Teddy is yeah. a center. Probably, yeah. yeah. yeah you yeah. essentially would have to take Teddy out of the squad. I think a better question yeah. is: Is Teddy still one for New South Wales? Like. That's where the that's where his big competition is. Like well, he'd be the right. Roosters, are, he'll play in the Roosters squad. They're not going to leave him out. But yeah, yeah. It's just, it's whether is he playing well enough, and he has been to the start. He'd of the be year. lights out the first month, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and mm. yeah, the, I guess the injury concerns um, will start to play a factor in it. But uh, outside of Dylan Edwards, there's probably no one else really banging that door down. You watch you watch the discussion though over the next month because uh, Dylan Edwards is banging the door yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. They've gone with Gutho in the past. Uh, you know, in the yeah. side there's. <laughs> An argument that Turbo could play one. There's an argument that Latrell could play one. Mm. Um, Pappenhausen's healthy yeah. at the moment, it's so also true. certainly there'll be a lot of opinions. But mm-hmm. uh, I think if he's healthy, I think the the Sky Blue number one still yeah, goes yeah. on on Teddy's back. Yeah, yeah. Is he the captain at the moment? Yeah, he'd have to drop yeah. the. He incumbent. was the captain. Yeah, drop yeah. the incumbent captain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. 
Well, and with Magic the Helm as well, does he want a new look? Yes. Uh, this is, that's going to be, question, yeah, that's gonna be the, the chat question, probably yeah. going into into Origin, which is, well, only six weeks away really mm-hmm. now. Yep. Yeah. Storm uh, also survived late comeback from the Dogs. Uh, tell you what, the Dogs without sort of uh, bothering anyone in, in the top eight uh, mm. on the ladder at the moment, uh, definitely playing better footy than what they did last year. Uh, mm. The Fox had a, had a Hattie. Um, and uh, they, they nearly knocked him off at the end. It was just one of those classic Melbourne knowing how to win games, which uh, they seem to seem to do. That's 13 in a row at Amy Park for them. Uh, we spoke a couple of episodes ago about that Xavier Coates finish, that mm-hmm. insane flying effort, which is probably going to be try of the year. Do you see his assist in this one? Yeah. He uh, was channeling a bit of his inner AFL, getting... Getting tackled and thrown out of bounds and chucked it on the boot and <laughs> uh, and he put someone through for a try there. So up there with uh, one of the best assists so far in the year too. Yeah, and I think he's probably bagging down the door for a recall into that Queensland side. Yeah. Uh, the outside backs are going to be tough to break into, but uh, I guess uh, leading in the hammer getting hurt uh, yep. For, yep. for the Dolphins might open the door for Coates to come straight back in for Queensland. Uh, but the Dolphins in the battle for Brisbane ended up on the wrong side with mm. the Broncos mm. winning. Uh, of course, having... I guess Reese Walsh back from his cheek injury wearing uh, a very interesting head to, to make that happen. I wonder <laughs> how much that actually uh, protects the... Uh, the fr- I think if you cop a knee on band. that thing, it's going to do fuck all. I would say so. <laughs> it's maybe more, just more takes, mental. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, 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 it could be yeah. a little bit of... Like, it's probably how you get the doctors on side. It's like, it'll be sweet, it'll be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, sure, right. The doctors, yeah. at, uh, more so than anyone, are going, this is the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, yeah, that's a good point there, Monks. Maybe the, that sort of just mental uh, readiness to return mm. to play, probably play into it a little mm-hmm. bit for, for Reese mm-hmm. Walsh. It's not long after a pretty nasty facial fracture. Yeah. Uh, on the scoreboard, geez, it was all uh, one-way traffic. Bronx got out to a 28-4 to four lead uh, before a couple of late consolations uh, from the Finns made it look better on paper than it was. If you just wouldn't mind chasing up how the hammer is looking and also mm. Tommy Flegler with the shoulder because... I think, yeah, that's how Flegler might be six to eight weeks. Yeah, yeah so... Because it was a bit more serious. Yeah, so both could be in doubt for Origin. Yeah. Definitely Flegler if it's if it's that long. Yeah, and what Milford, I think, is going to get a week or two for hitting mm-hmm. Walsh as well. Mm-hmm. So, Finns are going to... Their biggest issue continues. They're gonna, their death depth is going to be challenged. Yeah. Um, that's banged up, dude. They're, yeah. they're probably the most injured side that there is now. So... With Flegler and uh, and Hammer going into the uh, the casualty ward, they draw in the likes of Tom Gilbert. Who obviously, did his uh, ACL at the start of the year. Herbie Farnworth, Felice mm, Kafusi's mm. got a hammy. Uh, Max Plath got the suspension for that uh, that hip drop. Um, Lemu Lemu. There's a there's a, a a host of other Dolphins that are, are yeah. going to be missing time. So probably the most banged up team there is at the moment. Yep. Yeah, and Brisbane are in by all counts themselves have also been a bit banged up, but they've got a bit of, got the stocks. I guess they'll be able to bring guys in and and looked red um, hot without Reynolds, which I think has been yeah, their which, big, big which is a, which is a big thing for yeah. them. So, and I I think well having Walsh back really helps. Um, but yeah, uh, Brisbane needed to have a good showing against the Dolphins to start riding their their season a little bit because um, the Dolphins have been flying high, but mm-hmm. we're at the top of the ladder leading into the round, mm-hmm. uh, whereas Brisbane were kind of, you know, middle of the pack, dealing with their own injuries to their big three essentially and um, get one of them back. Uh, they managed to do it quite good in this one. Speaking mm. of the other two in that big three, the mm. Reynolds hammy certainly, uh, it was, you know, looked like that MCL may have played into things. Was he ready to go mm. back when when he did? Mm. And the all he's the playing th- on one leg, so yeah. give him credit for that. But yeah, oh, definitely <laughs> maybe not questioning needs, his toughness. Yeah, maybe he needed to rest it. Yeah. yeah, from the maybe the medical team's perspective, yeah. uh, had had they the first, first ten, back ten rounds don't matter. Come back for the back end of the season. Hundred percent. That's what matters the most. And the pain Haas injury seems to be a little bit all over mm. the place too. Obviously mm. had that little uh, surgery to clean out some stuff in the knee and, yeah. you know, return dates uh, seem to be all over the place. Mm. The Raiders have won in yeah, Golden yeah. Point. Right at the death of Golden Point yeah. too there. Yeah. Less than 10 <laughs> seconds to go seconds. there. I think Ethan Strange got a, a great run down the sideline mm. there to um, get them uh, within, say, uh, the back red zone essentially for – for the Dolphins into their end of the half and uh, Fogarty, I think, does the job and slots it straight over. It's been good old Stranger Things, hasn't he, so far? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good finish here from Fogarty. Bang. 
I was going to say straight over the black dot, but it's only, uh, only just <laughs> it's snuck in through, on, uh, but yeah, they get the on, on yeah. review. But the, yeah. the probably, Ra- probably Raiders get the two points. Probably shouldn't have let the Titans get that close to them. But that is big for the Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the worst thing is it's, it's still bad for uh, Rabbits because, yeah, Titans still haven't won a game, but they are still ahead of them. Still ahead of them. <laughs> yeah, still ahead of them on the, on the ladder. So Jeez. that's And go for the bye. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, back on the hammer, he's got a grade two tear for his hammy. So a bit less than a month, yeah. yeah, six weeks. Yeah, yeah. A lot of players dropping this year. Mm. Aren't they? Yeah, there've been a lot of and to big name stars, of course. Mm. So yeah, yeah. yeah Origin right. is going to be a very interesting period of mm-hmm. um, you know who's available at this stage mm-hmm. uh, for versus yeah. picking the the best best seventeen. The war of attrition, the uh, mm. old rugby league season, that's for sure. Yeah. Warriors and Manly played out the first draw of mm-hmm. the year, 22 apiece. Uh, Manly gave up a bit of a lead in that one. Sean Johnson and DCE, both very good. Mm. Probably the biggest mm. story uh, from a movement perspective, Josh Schuster to be released. Mm. Uh, he was told to go find a new club yep. uh, after you know paying him about 800 grand a year, or that's what he'd... Uh, that was the deal. S- that's the deal that he, he signed. signed last June. So, yeah. so what's the go with the rest of that money? Is, are they just cutting their losses? I think so. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. It seems well. He's unhappy because he's playing reserve grade, and I think his quote was, "I don't want to be wasting my talents." Mm. Um, but obviously, he doesn't fit into the new look. Manly, they must have thought they had a spot for him. Um, once they brought Luke Brooks, Luke Brooks across, is six, and, and Ben Turbo going well on the yeah, edge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Olakwatu's not losing his spot anytime soon. Mm-hmm. They obviously. Don't need to be paying him all that money to be playing reserve grade. So mm. they will eat a large chunk of his contract and uh, let him go elsewhere. Um, so next week he'll be at the Dragons. <laughs> Wouldn't uh, <laughs> say no problem. <laughs> it'll be uh, Josh Schuster off the bench. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely chasing and lo- looking for a new club at this stage. Um, yep. But yeah, I think the crazy thing is they, they wanted him, gave him all that big money, and they've just given up on him. So I wonder yeah. if there's just been. Maybe a clash there with the old heads and the coaching stuff in the background. Be a bit more to it. Yeah. How old? He's not that old, is he? He's no, only he's like 22, maybe? Yeah, 23? Quite, quite young. 22. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So Got a lot of footy ahead of him. Bloody oath. Yeah. Definitely talented, mm. just needs to put the work in and um, uh, he needs a good coach to capitalise on it. Yep. Mm. Come put a big red V on, Josh. <laughs> uh, Para bounced back after getting thumped by the Raiders uh, back in round five. Uh, Cowboys dropped down to third. Uh, had started their season very good. I hadn't. I didn't catch any of this last night. You boys catch no, no, catch no. much? Who watches Parramatta? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Parramatta. We obviously don't in our preseason. I think uh, I started watching it. I did um, see. I was going to say I did see South and Cronulla. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> caught, caught the back end of this. He was already moving on. That's yeah, sh- I tell you what. Um, <clears throat> that's sort of. Like, Souths weren't horrendous in this, but they're mm. dead last. On paper, they shouldn't be dead last. Uh, yeah. They've been the biggest probably talking point uh, in rugby league over the last few weeks. JD's job is safe for now. All the That's that's the report they yep. put out today was, yeah, his job's safe after you know, all the reports leading up to the week said, you know, mm. regardless if they win or lose, he's gone. Mm. Um, and more, you know, some of those saying, you know, lose and you're out, he's lost, and they're now saying, oh, his job's safe for the foreseeable future. So... Who knows what's going on there, but you know, all week rugby league media is about who's replacing him. Um, there was reports that they wanted Mal or Madge um, to come back. Uh, <coughs> Mal, I think, said that you know his agent hadn't been contacted yet, so there's nothing for them. But I think that's more someone's leaked that, put it out there, put some feelers out. Essentially, who's going to want to be interim coach for Souths? Mm. Who's available that wants to take up the job? I think Madge makes the most sense. He just walks straight back into that. Well, but, but he's, he's going to give up his origin gig. Yeah. yeah. Or is he going to do both? Like, like how nah. how would that work? Um, but then there's already talking about replacements with Wayne Bennett uh, yeah. off contract with the Finns. I think Wayne's already said, I'm in Queensland. I want to be in Queensland. So I'd rather take a Queensland job. Um, I also need to go to a retirement village. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Which is probably better to retire in Queensland, like go to Noosa or somewhere mm. like that. Uh, so being That'd on the be Sunshine nice. Coast makes the most sense. I think you'll probably just stay there as a consultant. Mm. But, you know, they're mm. doing the ties of like come to South, spend two, you, two years, have Sam Burgess as your assistant, yeah. you know, he, and then he can take over from you uh, long term uh, considering how well he's doing in England. Yep. Yeah. So that's all we talked about all week. Uh, they still went out and lost. They did drop Cook. Um, so Damien Cook's uh, head scratcher for mine as well. Yeah, exactly. I think he's the. I think he'd been playing badly. Yeah, uh, but I think he was the the big name veteran they could drop. Yeah, okay. Because with Latrell out, and then they, I guess, don't want to really 
piss off Cody Walker. Mm. So I think Cook's probably the main one you'd think would be the massive team player. I'm like, fine. So if you want to sit me down, sit me down. Mm. Uh, send send your message. Uh, didn't seem to get through because, um, like I said, they're still lost. <laughs> Truka Kanoa, we mm. played pretty well in this. Yeah, top of the table. Yeah. <laughs> Team. Yeah, yeah. And where to here from South? It's, Technically, they can only go up. Um. Well, that, they will because they play, they've got the bye next week, so yeah. they'll get the two points and they will uh, jump the Titans. They would have been pretty happy with this uh, charge down efforts that have just occurred here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it gets very difficult after that because they then go Melbourne in Melbourne uh, into Penrith on a on a Thursday night. Yeah, I don't think they win that. There's a good chance that we're looking at a South team that's one and eight. Yeah. And Before they face some mighty dragons in yeah. round 10. <laughs> and I think that, that record, record there as well, of their last 21 games, they've lost 16 of them. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty, pretty bad. Well, that's and right. It's not just this season. It's the whole back end of last year yeah, too. Yep. So yep. Uh, looking at, you know, 12 months-ish of, of uh, poor South's performances. Uh, yeah. Definitely the pressure building uh, on, on JD and the, the senior players, that's for sure. Yeah, and if you were that bloke that bet on JJ being the first head coach sacked, you are a miracle man because that is something we definitely weren't expecting. But it also hasn't happened yet. Yeah, writing oh, <laughs> on the wall. I think it, it, it's coming. We're just talking about how he's safe for now. Yeah, safe for now. Yeah. Uh, that basically means the opposite. <laughs> He'll be gone on Tuesday. Loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. <laughs> yeah. So South Sydney's longest losing streak was 22 games back in 1945-1947. So that's interesting because they dog shit in those like 2000s yeah. as well. Yeah, but that's that's consecutive though. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, they've already beat yeah. the Bulldogs here, so they've they've reset that. But you know, they have yeah. a long streak of losing. They win one and then lose four. So uh, yeah, it's been a bit bit tough for them. Mm. Oh well, Dragons are fucking. Breathe them fire. Three and three. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Beating the power, power horses that are power houses, even that are the West Tigers. Yeah, West have been better in the last fortnight, but uh, yeah, the Red V got the job done here today. Uh, good win there at Campbelltown. Zach Lomax probably, yeah, played uh, out of his skin again. Mm-hmm. He's, he's probably in, in career best form, really, uh, through six mm-hmm. rounds. News did break during the week that he has uh, confirmed that he'll be signing with Parramatta yep. next year from uh, for 2.6 mil, so 650 a year. Mm-hmm. So he's going to so take a pay cut. A bit of haircut, yep. To go over to Parramatta to probably not play fullback. Yeah, and maybe not yeah. play on the wing. Is that like an average centre? Yeah, that's average centre money. Yeah. So I think that's what yeah. – what I thought about interest this was also four years. Yeah. I thought maybe take a two-year deal. Mm-hmm. You know, go back, play Santa, stab yourself, and then try to get that new contract of back up to 800K kind of thing, that money, sort of money. And well, so, probably, but he's, he's got guaranteed, I guess, for the next four years. Probably speaks mm-hmm. volumes to how poorly he's been treated by yeah. the Dragons, that he's willing to, t- to take that much of a haircut. And to, over a long term as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and then go somewhere to not play fullbacks. And yeah. he's playing, he's ov- like anyone that watched the game today, plucking the ball, the high ball out of the air, setting mm-hmm. up tries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Had that ridiculous flick pass last week uh, against Newcastle. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a bit of a fluky element to that, sure, but the bloke's talented mm. uh, as anything, and definitely that preseason sort of kick up the bum uh, from Flanagan uh, has has brought out the best in him. But unfortunately uh, for Dragons fans, we'll only get to see it uh, till the end of this year. Yeah, that's it. but also caveat, he's probably playing for a new contract too, so you know, a bit of that comes into it. Mm. But, uh, mm. like we said, deal is for next season. Uh, all accounts of the swap deals yep. probably not going to happen for nah, the season. Yeah. I don't think with Moses having a decent injury, going to miss a fair chunk of the start of this year. This season, I don't think they, you know, they're not in title contentions currently fighting for a top spot. Um, so that they need, say, another outside back of Lomax's calibre. Um, so I think they will have happily sit, sit um, keep that one. Uh, on the back burner, uh, unless he can play six, which uh, <laughs> I've never seen it at the yeah. Dragons. Yeah, because mm. uh, you know, with Moses out, they haven't really found anything uh, yet. I think to support Dylan Brown too much for the foreseeable future. But I, I also don't think Lomax is that you know going to solve that problem. Correct. And they yeah. really don't need any outside backs currently without Moses. So I think they'll happily say, "Hey, we've locked him up for next year," and stay sit, stay put, sit on that deal. Uh, for the foreseeable future. 
keep lighting up that right edge uh, for the Dragons. Mm. Yeah, I mean, keep that's him it. Off is he playing really table. well because he just play, is a really good winger, or yeah, I think like he's has Flanagan got. Oh, uh, it's a combination of everything. I think he's talented as anything. I think him and yeah. Ben Hunt have kind of got a little bit of ESP going on as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's there's times where you know that Lomax has just been in the right right place at the right mm. time. Mm. But yeah, just that his work rate, like the amount of carries that he's taking, the amount of tough carries that he's taken out of you know yeah. our own end, like mm. it's not quite at a you know 2020 toto kind of standard. But yeah. y- you know yeah. that's kind of the comparison in terms of tough carries. And then from an yeah. attacking perspective, like. Just been unreal under the high ball, um, you know, scoring heaps of tries yeah. uh, and linking up pretty well with Tyrell Sloan as well. Probably bringing up the at the best uh, in in Sloan. So had Sloan played it today after getting hooked for half to- at half time. Yeah, last game. not as electric as he'd been in the first month, but better than the. I think the rain was playing havoc. With him uh, last week, uh, mm. for anyone that didn't see that game, probably the wettest game of rugby league that I've oh, seen in soon. at oh. least five years. <sighs> yeah. uh, would hate to be in just playing in that in general, let alone yeah. being a fullback and yeah. trying to pluck the ball <laughs> out. You know, it's bringing massive in, high balls. Yeah, oh, it, it was it was it was the grabbers that were fucking yeah. Yeah, in, like incredibly hard for them to judge. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. you had to slide in there, do the last bit in your canoe to try and try, <laughs> <laughs> try and work out where the ball was going to end up. So I think that was more it than anything. Yeah. Uh, Sloan, you know, has been good like for throughout through six mm-hmm, weeks, mm-hmm. like one of the leading try scorers in the NRL. Obviously, his defense got a little bit uh, more to work on, but that's fine. You can he's always he's always going to bulk up and get a lot of defensive coaching. He's got that attacking flair that the Dragons yeah. have probably lot you know didn't have in those 2021 2022 seasons. Yeah, agree. agree. Mm. Well, How I think many the tries dra- does he have seven. Uh, I think Dragons will be happy though, being uh, middle of the pack. Yeah, three, three and three. You can take that. They have a tough game against the Warriors uh, come Friday night. In yep. New Zealand or at home? At home. Yeah. Uh, six on the season. Six on the season, so th- yep. third in the third, league. Third, yeah. but, yeah, tying for first. Ah, tied first? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then just yeah to recap, uh, Raiders getting the job done against the Titans. Did you see the first half of this before we went? Yeah, so most of the game essentially, um, classic mm. Raiders thing, giving up leads and probably should have scored more points against the Titans. Uh, maybe mm. played down to their competition more than I will, you know, more than we would have liked. Uh, Ian Strange, good as always. Fogarty did the job, um, and th- of course they had the young fella, the Chevy, Chevy or eighteen year old. Eighteen, I think he is. Yeah, looked pretty solid. Um, gee. I saw he got one of those charge downs to uh, stop Kieran Foran from winning in Golden Point. So, yeah, I think by all accounts they'll be happy with the win, but I feel like they would have preferred not to have had to escape with it with a one-point victory. They would have liked to have done a lot more. And Two, so, yeah. 205 run metres for Chevy Stewart on his debut. That's yeah. pretty where, impressive. Where did Savage end up with his run metres? He had 105, I think, in the first half. So uh, Ended up with 205. Yeah. Tarpano had 303. Damn. So in, in a week where Manu had 370, Tarpano mm-hmm. goes out there and has 303 as a middle forward. Yep. He's uh, he's cut cut from a different cloth, old Joe Tarpano, isn't he? Yeah, he's playing. He play what, 52 minutes? Maybe? Uh, 70 minutes. 70 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Maybe only a 10-minute yeah. break. Yeah, big minutes there. Yeah, uh, it's, well. Oh, I'm sorry. Gone, and gone yeah, points. So he yeah, had 20 yeah, points on the yeah. – 20 minutes on the, on the bench. Yeah. Uh, that'll do it for the rugby league for mm-hmm. the week. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So. Let's talk some Aussie Rules footy. Uh, won't go through all the results from Gather Round, but a few of the key talking points. Brisbane got their season back on track after yep. all the noise around, you know, Vegas trip and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, team culture and whatnot. Uh, better, best to play North Melbourne uh, when, when that's all going on. Uh, get your season <laughs> back on track. Port had a massive win as well. West Coast gave uh, the Swans a bit of a worry. Uh, and then uh, Cats and Dogs, probably the, the best game uh, there on the Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. What do we think about the Blues-Dockers game? There was a pretty controversial call at towards the end. Uh, we've got a captain's challenge in rugby league. Does uh, AFL need something of the like? Yeah, well, to, to, to give slightly more context, so the goal was kicked mm-hmm. um, and uh, footage – uh, shown from the crowd. There's an angle from the crowd mm-hmm. behind the goalpost. Shows a clear hit on a Dockers player that um, takes a massive deviation. So, in theory, it shouldn't have been a goal, mm-hmm. uh, which w- would have made this game, of course, a lot closer and a lot tighter mm-hmm. to finish off. Uh, it seems like a lot of the players 
course, on the ground saw it happen, uh, but they didn't review it and they kept on playing. So uh, the question has come up about captain's challenge, and I think a, a lot of sports, you know, the major ones we follow, like the NRL, have implemented theirs in the NFL. Elves got, I guess, the coaches' challenge. The red flag is the equivalent in this, uh, and I've, all week, all week has been: should they have to do something similar? Should they have a captain's challenge to challenge these umpiring decisions where they may have uh, clearly missed something? Well, they've come out uh, during the week and said absolutely not. That mm. we're, we're not going to even entertain the idea of a captain's challenge mm. they're really I love how that headline also follows up with dissent is it's, in focus yeah, yeah. so it's like, so if you bi- the other way, yeah, the other way yeah. yeah if you bitch about it we're <laughs> also going to give 50s away or we're also going to penalize you yeah, yeah. Mm. how interesting i don't see like i don't I don't hate it as an as an idea obviously you know, especially within like scoring yeah like if a guy goes yeah. no no I, i've touched that um, and the ref's like no we have it's but scoring good. The, scoring they will review it they review the, all of it, like in the like the yeah. The yeah. If it's on the go, if it's on the goal line, that yeah. But like if he's touched it as you're it, kicking it off from the fifty, like yeah, he gets a finger to also it. review it. The reason why this wasn't is was because it? it was a mark, like so uh, someone's the going mark up, leading into the goal. Yeah, exactly okay. leading into it. That's why. Mm. Yeah, interesting. But anything on the line or anything off the boot, they they will look at it. Mm. Yeah, so maybe yeah. they're they're thinking about stoppages and play exactly not the slowing the one. game down anymore. Mm. But um, I think, but like a contest for a, a mark in. So inside 50, mm. where you will stop play as the guy sets up for a shot at goal, I think that's a fair point to throw yeah. in a captain's I, challenge. I suppose the, the, the playing devil's... Like in a run of play in the yeah. midfield, I was like, yeah, no. I think playing devil's advocate here, the amount of balls that get paid as a mark where there has been some sort of touch or some kind of simultaneous yes, possession, yes. You'll, mm. you'll be... Stopping the game a fair bit. Obviously, yeah. you just yeah. limit it by saying the first. Yeah, they get you know, one. You get one, one or, and you, half or you get one wrong. And yeah, you, and you, you lose it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't, don't want them checking everything. But yeah, you, you save it for the last couple of minutes of the game. You see a big moment like mm. this, a mark inside 50, mm. and you go, hey, I've touched that, and they've gone, on. Oh, we don't think so. It's like, I want to challenge that. That'd be cool. And that, that'd be a quick re- – like, I think that's or, a quick review. Like, yeah. it, they're not having to check, like, 20 different angles to yeah. see if you've got a put down. Or there's, <laughs> there's a captain's challenge and you can only use it in the last five minutes yeah, of a quarter yeah. or something. Yep. Yeah, I, I'd be open to it. Or the opposite. I don't think, I don't think it's a horrible – Yeah, horrible but you can idea. also do the same. But I can see, also see why the AFL is like, nah, like the umpires yeah. are there for a reason. Yeah. It kind of opens thing. a can of worms. But, like, the, you know, they, yeah. they don't get everything right. That's the thing. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole point of replay in the first place. 100%. <laughs> and the, the best sport is, is cricket. Like, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like looking at, you know, f- f- all the technology that's come in and it's relatively quick in cricket. Mm-hmm. The, mm. the advantage yeah. and the, got Well, they've been quicking it up as well. Yeah, like they try to make it faster. But it's a slow game as well. Yeah, so yeah. Well, c- compared to a rapid rapid game like yeah. the AFL. But you can see how often the umpires get it wrong in mm-hmm. real time mm-hmm. from watching cricket. So. And there's been, the, well, there's a lot of these kind of instances um, – Mm. In last season, where they probably should have had a look at some things mm-hmm. uh, and paid them, um, and yeah, I think you, you could probably put something in place again. Probably test it in preseason and see if it works. Test it in the VFL, like the lower leagues, if you really want to put something in place. Yeah, and then but like then it's hard as well because you got less cameras. <laughs> so yeah, like, uh, you haven't got. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go. Yeah. yeah, too low. It's, I, I think there's even a like nice a VFL game. Like they've probably got. I don't know. F- a few cameras, yeah. You know, following the game, as yeah. opposed to the AFL, where there's yeah. probably probably nothing good close to twenty. Enough to yeah. yeah, but um, if you wanted, uh, yeah. this is still a trial. You could set some things up for a VFL game to then run a trial as well. So you could do some work to put in it. Uh, but I think you have also got to work at your rule set. What's reviewable? What isn't? Yeah. Because um, you mm-hmm. know, if if you didn't get a penalty when you thought you should have got a free or whatever, um, is that worth calling? I, I think probably not. Mm. But I think. Things that lead directly to scoring is probably where you want to have a look at reviews. Yep. And look, I don't, I don't hate it. Uh, I just don't see it happening in the near future. No, I think uh, AFL's very hard stance in and their, their approach. Quick, yeah, yeah they they'll yep. they'll keep going to to um, to the death uh, until you know the grand final is decided by this, and then some club, <laughs> some club, uh, let's say Collingwood is fucked, and then you know they've got all the members <laughs> and the money, and then they want to. Uh, beat the door down and the AFL to get a new rule. Saint Colin was going back to the GF this year. Yeah. You never know; it's a long season, bro. <laughs> did get a win last week against yeah, uh, they Hawthorne. Yeah. Did they win this week? Or they on the bye? Uh, they didn't play this week. Oh, yeah, 
them and uh, Sydney on the buy this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that is a good segue into this week. Uh, a few few uh, interesting games of note. Brisbane Big game. Uh, we spoke about them getting a good win against a pretty ordinary team uh, last week in Gather Round. They beat a good team in mm-hmm. Melbourne. Uh, that's definitely not pressure gone, but uh, the the, yeah, mon- the did, monkey comes off the back. of I Did them. not expect yeah. them to beat Melbourne in no. Melbourne. No, no, so, uh, not, by, not by that margin as well. Yeah, I don't think yeah. a lot of people thought. Brisbane will get the job done, but maybe they finally started the season. The right, the right of the ship, <laughs> variable ship, and they're off and sailing. So uh, they did all pretty well in this. Um, Charlie Ka- Cameron, Cameron got three. three. Dunkley, Barry, Zorko, mm. all good. Yeah, Barry was elite. Colton <laughs> Falstrup made the, his debut. Mm. Uh, fiery little uh, fella from Esperance. Uh, so WA is keeping the pumping out uh, these, these good footballers. Oh, uh, yeah. Looks like he could be pretty handy moving forward. Bombers also got a bit of an upset win against the Dogs Friday mm-hmm. night. Uh, it was Xavier Dersma uh, who was pretty good with two goals, 20 disposals. They did get hammered in gather round by mm. Port Adelaide. Kyle Langford looked all right. Did you uh, catch any highlights or catch this one, Monks? Uh, I think it was on in the TV on the TV in the background. I mm-hmm. didn't pay too much attention on it. I think I was... Baby. Baby. I think I was watching the NRL. Oh, you were watching Battle of Brisbane? <laughs> yes, yes, I think I was actually, yeah. Corey Oates has got some legs on him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. Uh, no, but, um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. It's good, good to win. get a, a big win. Yeah. Plus against the Bulldogs, they've been mm. playing pretty well. Yeah, again, um, similar sort of riding the ship, I think. Yeah, Doggies yeah. might be a little bit disappointed in their goal kicking uh, straightness in this one, but. Um, yes. Yeah. I think we got uh, lucky with that. I guess anyone would be happy um, to have gotten a 30 point win. Yeah, dogs. After how well they started the year, uh, you know, lose two by, losses in a row. Well, lose by a kick to the cats, yeah, yeah, and then lose one that did probably would have been uh, favoured to win against the bombers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. GW. Uh, well, yesterday, uh, theatre of dreams, mm-hmm. one point. Well, and th- <laughs> three games decided by three or less points. So mm-hmm. GWS yeah. St Kilda, GWS cruising the whole game. St Kilda came back hard late. Uh, mm. Giants hold on by a point to go to five and O. Oh. Bradley Hill very good in this one. Thirty three disposals, thirteen marks, and a goal. The Theatre of Dreams that looked good. Marnica Oval mm-hmm. so, sold out. It's obviously, it's not that hard to do given it's only about eleven thousand people. But uh, looked very nice atmosphere out there at Marnica on Saturday afternoon. Who got hurt mm. or collapsed in this game? Sam Taylor. Uh, I saw they held him over at Canberra Hospital for. A I think he's okay. But yeah, he's yeah okay. I think he's okay, uh, Marks. If you wouldn't mind chasing that one up, uh, no, obviously well, a also very good defender last season, and and you know rolling into this year as well. Uh, I th- yeah, I think he went to ho- hospital for some observation. Yeah. We also glazed over the bulldog dude as well, who collapsed in in back play, mm. and um, they. I think it's Bev came out and was saying like, oh, no concussion. It was all good. It was all good. Uh, but then some of the footage came out, and I was like, actually. Yeah, he probably had um, had some sort of concussion, uh, so they've <laughs> going to look at that process and uh, monitor him uh, over the coming weeks as well. Yeah, I don't know mm. what the go is with Libba uh, here. Played out, dying minutes. Yeah, like he's, he's, he's just kind of like running back in the play and then just collapses. And I think is it Parish who was the closest one. Yeah, yep. the closest one to him. That pretty concerned. Um, yeah, came over was like, hey, we need trainers out here ASAP. Because um, he didn't look real good. He's not saying too much, just that he, he's Jeez. suffered a medical episode. He had been checked for concussion, cleared of any issues. Yeah, yeah it'd be interesting Long to see. Non-contact collapses on the field. No, nah, yeah, so. interesting to see what they say moving forward. Uh, any news there on Sam Taylor, other than he was just in hospital overnight and yeah. uh, kept for observation? Uh, yeah, I think I saw some socials. So he was giving a thumbs up that he's okay and yeah. uh, should be yeah. okay for the... He'll be in a concussion protocol, you'd imagine. Yeah, I agree. Uh, So Giants hold on there, uh, making uh, uh, Monica a little bit of a fortress Mm -hmm. in recent years. Uh, Blues finally Mm. come crashing back to earth. Maybe it was a bit of karma from uh, from Gather Round. Uh, They lose by two points to the previously winless Adelaide Crows. Uh, Kick pretty straight, 16-400 straight uh, for Adelaide. Uh, Good for... Blues baggers to see Sammy Walsh back out there uh, making his uh, uh, debut. 
uh, after recovering from a pretty lingering back injury. Uh, but he had 34 disposals, 13 tackles on the game. This wasn't the bag as night. They couldn't really kick straight and maybe didn't get the rub of the umpire's call in this one. Uh, I was <laughs> at, out, out at dinner with the phone on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, keeping an eye on this I, I wasn't paying attention at dinner and I was watching the footy. <laughs> yeah. uh, did Barry kick the winning goal in this? And for, uh, for the Crows? Sam Barry? Possibly. Possibly. Close. So uh, they kicked uh, like the last three goals of the game. Yeah. Like that, yeah. It was Sam Barry. Yeah. I think, I think the Crows would be happy themselves as well. They've kind of been um, really struggling for linkages and like mm. um, about, well, essentially getting forward and scoring points. Uh, it's been pretty quiet for Tex Walker as well, but got four in this. Bit of four in that. Yeah, and maybe another one of those teams that's uh, starting to get their chemistry together and uh, maybe go on a bit of a run like they did last year, the Crom, um, and mm. push for a bottom uh, spot in the top eight. Boot of the last three, the Crom. Uh, 21 minutes, 22, 30, and 29 minutes left. Yeah, yeah, it was right at the death. Yeah, yeah it was. Gold Coast looked pretty convincing against uh, pretty hapless Hawthorne. Nara Anderson, 36 disposals, eight marks, eight tackles, and a goal. Ben King boots four. And uh, the Gold Coast uh, keeping uh, with the top eight. They are mm. uh, just in uh, in eighth position uh, at the, at the um, end of the round. What do you think of yeah. uh, Hardwick's job so far? I think he's got a pretty young team and they're mm. playing very structured and fast football. they um, he wants them to play, and it seems like they've completely bought into his approach. I think the litmus test was probably last week against GWS, mm. and obviously not quite yeah. at a GWS standard at the moment, but uh, certainly Still kept kept with them. Yeah, and they probably should be putting Hawthorne away at yeah. home pretty comfortably. It, I think my interesting thing I think from this was, um, the, I guess, the one massive significant change from last season this thing. season is coaching. Mm. Um, so yeah, whether. It's hard work. Seems so far the hard work's the wrong bloke at the moment to yeah, un- unlock so. their talent and put, yep. it, put it together. Um, yeah, I don't think they win the comp this year, but if they keep this tra- trajectory, then yeah, a couple of years from now they could be a force to reckon with. Well, Especially they get all the young talent and they keep playing it. Yeah, you mentioned GWS. Like, is the Gold Coast where GWS was four or five years ago kind of situation? That where GWS ran a GF four yeah, or five years ago. Yeah, yeah, sort of like <laughs> work. Were there yeah. yeah, sorry, that, sort of that trough, yeah, where they were at that trough, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sons have kind of been, haven't really hit that height. Yeah, that I was, wouldn't, I don't think the goal quite source, there. Um, yeah. I've kind of got to. Um, but their list is like young and talented. Super young. Like yeah. Anderson's yeah. not old, you know, Matt Rowe coming into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lakosha's looking pretty good. Yeah. Talk's probably the oldest bloke in the team. Yeah. I'm trying to see who else. Actually, maybe Woods we're, we're, is. You probably watch more of the Gold Coast than, than what we would. Mm. Uh, Sean O, that is. Yep. Who else looks good for him? Oh, Flat, with, uh, Flan- Flanders. Yep. That's all right. Rao, Wits, or like Ainsworth. Wits talk like the, 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 the main big names have all been really good for them. Mm. But I, I, the main thing is like a lot of those guys aren't name value yet. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, superstar, right? yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they've... They've gone with the youth movement. They've moved out a lot of their veterans, like senior veterans, like which will struggle to play at all of the rest of the season because um, I think this is the way they want to go. And I guess it goes with um, what Hardwick was saying, you know, like 80% of the roster's here. Um, we just need to get the last couple of guys and yep. we can make a run. So yeah, I think he obviously really liked the talent they had. It's probably why he took the job. Yep. Um, and, yeah, he's now working his way of putting that best talent on the team and uh, teaching them how to be elite footballers and then to – you know, play finals and potentially win a GF. I like it. I reckon they had eighty percent, sort of three quarters there. Probably s- still need a couple of big signings, maybe a couple of draft picks, and yeah, yeah mm. would be really sort of going moving into that top four chat. Whereas this year it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, probably good enough to play yeah. finals yeah, the, footy. The, the, don't don't see them bothering anyone yeah, later yeah. in the year. They might have creaked the window open. <laughs> they they mm. just cracked it a little bit. And, <laughs> yeah, maybe get a bit years, of a draft in. Yeah, maybe they can uh, open it no up a little intended. bit. But, yeah, I think a good Gold Coast team would be um, oh, fun, good fun. for Gold Coast because they've, they've, they've struggled for dreams. donkers. Yeah. Years. yeah. Well, not just that, but across all the Every, sports. All sports, yeah. yeah. There hasn't been a, a strong Gold Coast so, team. So, yeah, I think they'd be very happy to have 
uh, someone playing regular regular finals football in the future. It's the uh, graveyard for Australian for sporting franchises. Teams, yeah. Franchises. The Gold yep. Coast Seagulls say hello. Yep. The Gold Doesn't Coast United in the A League say yeah. hello. The Titans haven't done anything amazing either. So, mm. yeah. Port get a win uh, against Freo. Port. You know, speaking of windows, they're probably right in theirs. Uh, be them, GWS, yeah. Sydney, maybe Carlton. Who knows uh, this year? Uh, but it's showing that they can win uh, yeah, some of the close games. I think Zach Butters got uh, had to go to the match review and he's got away with just a fine. If you wouldn't mind just chasing that up because that would be massive if he gets rubbed. Uh, also, from a Brownlow perspective, if you, he was to miss, you did just games. remind me about. Um, Pappenhausen and his hip drop, and then he got a seven hundred and fifty dollar fine. Yeah. <laughs> so can I borrow? <laughs> can I borrow seven hundred and fifty dollars? Asking for a, no. What he said? Has anyone got spare seven hundred and fifty? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Pretty good uh, there from Pappy. It was a bad hip drop as well. Yeah, I think um, he's just lucky that he weighs about eighty kilos. And <laughs> if that, <laughs> it was wet. So he's soaking wet. Yeah, maybe eighty kilos. <laughs> Pretty no, funny there from the Pap. Mm. Uh, uh, Butters was cleared Cleared Yeah yep. So it's a pretty big uh, for, for him and for Port Moving forward yeah. I haven't seen any footy today Other than uh, I know that Geelong won And West Coast uh, They held yes, on yep. uh, Over there in the West yeah. uh, Monks if you got any uh, Numbers there I think Jez Cameron Booted a few Yeah yes. Geelong yeah. smashed him Yeah, yeah. 100, yeah. Almost 140 points Yeah so Jez The Sneasel got 38 six. though mm. Yeah looking at the Um Disposals well. for for <laughs> the kangaroos, they uh, were definitely moving the ball around. I uh, just couldn't really convert that into goals. Yeah, she was just probably getting shitloads off at half, off half back because that's where the <laughs> ball was the yeah. whole game. That's it. Um, Cameron's kick six. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Bailey Scott got twenty seven disposals. Well. Yep. Um, Luke Davies. Uniaki. Uniaki had twenty seven. Tom Powell had twenty six as well. What about for the Catters? Cats, uh, Max Holmes had 25. Tom Stewart had 24 as well there. Yeah. Um, yeah Holmes was the top for the They're looking for the sneaky cats. good, hey? Cats, I don't think anyone really thought that they'd be... You know, obviously, it's just north, but they're sitting second. Mm. They're undefeated. Um, yeah. yeah. So far, so good for Geelong, that's for sure. That's it. I suppose we have the, the same chat every sort of year. It's like, is Geelong... Is this the year Geelong sort of falls off? They're, they're old. Um, but, yeah, I think just their team chemistry and... Yeah, well, for the, but they're, they're premier. I think for the first time, they're they're not old like kind of anymore. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you got to remember, they are a premier like side. They yeah. will get talent like in through the door. Yeah, yeah they'll get talent through the door. So, yeah, maybe they've finally got some of those guys that they can then tie with the older dudes like yeah. Dangerfield and Cameron in the squad. They can you know again teach them, bring them up in the the cats culture and. Yeah, they'll yeah, be definitely. competing for finals spots uh, in the not too distant future. Well, yeah. uh, if we want to know how they're going to be the rest of the season, how's this next month for them? At Brisbane, uh, Blues at the G, D's at the G, mm. Port Adelaide in, in Geelong. That's yeah. about as hard a run as, yeah. you, can, as you can have. Yeah. Tough that'll be, month. That'll be big for them. Uh, but yeah, I think that rhetoric around the catch just needs, just should be changing now. Like, they're not that old, like I said, they're not that old team anymore. Mm. That's going to. Fall off a cliff, like yeah, they've they've built something really good there, and they'll probably just continue to keep playing as they've been playing. Mm-hmm. Even when they were old, the rhetoric was dumb, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Why are they all? You uh, may have lost a step, but you, you what you gain in wisdom, uh, you can up one hundred percent. Yeah. And uh, the West Coast game, yeah. uh, Waterman had six at one stage, yeah, six, six and two yeah. is what he got. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen disposals, followed by Kelly. I think was the top. Yeah, yeah, with 29. Always gets a bit of it. Yeah, Harry Reid had 27 and a goal. Yo had 2.1, 27. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think for the Tigers, Bolton probably was their best. Did you the say Harley Reid had 27 and a goal? Yep. Wow. All right, so that's definitely his best game mm-hmm. in his mm-hmm. short AFL career. Uh, and what was I saying? Bolton got 3 and 1 and 21, so he did his best to keep a minute. But mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Dusty was a bit quiet, 13 and 1. Has been so, quite a few. Yeah, has he been hurt and working his way back? I feel like uh, I think he did. He have a hamstring. Yeah, one might of those be, hamstring might be a little at the moment. Yeah, mm. but good for West. They finally get on the board. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Any any donuts left, or are they is that they, should be it. That should be it. Because considering they had four have teams, North had a win. North haven't had a win. Uh, so Hawthorne, uh, Hawthorne, Hawthorne, Hawthorne had a win as well. Yeah. yeah. 
because they, for the first time ever, they had four teams that were 0 4 last week. All right, uh-huh. uh, so mm. we've now gotten rid of two donuts. Yeah, so Adelaide and uh, West Coast off the nudie, and uh, mm. Hawthorne and North Melbourne I would still on it. Hawthorne would be a bit better than that. Nah, I think. They're, and they play each other like a bottom tier team, but yeah, they're yeah. young, young. <laughs> young. Spoon Bowls <laughs> next Spoon Bowl. Sunday, right. four PM Marvel. Oh. Be there, be square. Mm. That'll do it yeah. for some AFL. Let's uh, let's go over to the NBA. Curry, Curry sets, fires, puts it up, bang! We'll we'll start. To, we might have to get a Wembley one of those. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's Wemby. You see the new uh, Nike logo mm-hmm. with the yep. alien? Yep. It's looking pretty good. We'll talk some Wemby uh, <laughs> when we talk uh, about the West. Let's start in the yeah. East. Planes uh, are only well, what, 48 hours away, Wednesday morning, our time. Uh, we've got the final uh, matchups uh, yep. early in the morning over here in Australia. Boston, uh, they're 63 and 18. They've only lost four games at TD Garden this season. Uh, they're $2.63 to win the whole thing. Yeah, best across the looking both, both conferences. Unreal. Ones. And uh, what about Holiday getting four year extension, 135 mils? Mm-hmm. Pretty yeah, pushing a max contract there. Yeah, so. Lock him in long term. Well, so. obviously, it's, you know, proofs in the pudding. Like he was the missing, it seems to be the missing piece. Yep. Uh, the expectation now is to, to bring your ring back yeah, to, to very proud, the way. very proud building. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they've been sort of been there or thereabouts the last few years mm-hmm. and they bring him in and uh, it's immediately playing pretty well. So, yeah, probably deserved uh, the, the big contract extension. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. anyone's catching them in the East. That's that's for sure. So, um, uh, <laughs> I think the the challenge will be when they go up against those West teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so literally yeah. The, only in the finals. I think that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I think it's a lot of pressure. I think they could. I don't think they're going to get bothered early. Yeah, in that, the, that's going to be the concern. Run, they, but yeah. they can cruise through their conference, get in the finals, and they get some battle hardened West team that's gone the hard road and. Um, find it very difficult. Yeah, even a conference finals, I could see possibly, you know, a Philly will get to in a second. Maybe the Bucks if they sort their shit out. Yep. The Knicks have been yeah. awesome yep. the last six weeks. Uh, it could happen, but certainly head and shoulders above anyone in the East. Oh, definitely, definitely. Bucks have been going in the wrong direction. Uh, they're three and seven in their last ten. A uh, little bit of a scare with uh, Giannis midweek. Uh, Only calf strain is what this calf is. strain. Yeah. yeah, the early concern was Achilles. Watching the mechanism, I didn't think there was probably uh, any real concern for his Achilles. Seems to be fine. Uh, calf strain uh, is what it went down to. Knicks, they've been pretty good. Jalen Brunson, this is his last six games: 30, 39, 45, 43, 35, 35. So. Not a single game under 30. Uh, consistency has been unreal. And mm. I think he's in the top five now for points per game in the NBA. Uh, also showing that they can beat good teams in their house. So yeah, Bucks and Celtics. Bucks and Celtics away. So as we you know look at a, a you know Eastern Conference Finals or uh, you know at least just playing good mm. playoff mm. Uh, basketball, that's what Knicks fans uh, want. It's probably what Knicks fans deserve after... Many, 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 years many, of, many, many of, uh, of heartache. So uh, start to believe a little bit, New York yeah. Knicks fans, uh, but they're they're going to run into a Boston team at some stage, you'd imagine, yeah. or even a, a you know a hardened Bucks side. Yeah, and I think yeah. a, as a, um, a bit of context, like Milwaukee, who currently sit second, uh, would be sixth if they're in the East, um, in the West. So, mm-hmm. yeah. so the West based is, on the record, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't. I think Boston's the team that's going to come out of these. Like you just see, it difficult for how the others will do. But hey, on on the day, you know, uh, any team can beat any team. They're all super talented at this point. Mm. Cavs. You know, speaking of how difficult it is for these mm. Eastern teams going to the West, they went on a West road trip. They went one and four. They Luckily got to play the Jazz, mm-hmm. but had away losses at both Los Angeles teams, Denver and Phoenix. So that yeah. probably speaks volumes to where these mid sort of tier Eastern teams are. Yeah. Orlando and Indiana are 201 to 1, <laughs> despite being fifth and sixth in the East. Uh, I think Philly's probably the <laughs> best team to talk about here yep. at 19 bucks to win the whole thing. Uh, yep. Obviously, with a near MVP, 
coming back. <laughs> Joel M- uh, Embiid. They've won seven in a row. They've won four with Embiid back. Did have that little scare yesterday yeah, with the rolled, rolled ankle. ankle. Yep. Mm. Uh, but even in a game where he missed, you know, sort of five minutes uh, from a rolled ankle, puts up a near triple double with thirty points. Uh, and yeah. the evolution of Tyrese Maxey just continues. He had a fifty burger against the Spurs. Yeah. Uh, I think if there's any smockies to look out for in uh, in the East, it could be Philly. They could be a real problem. That's why they're at nineteen dollars there. Yeah, so that's right. Despite the fact they're in seventh. Yeah, they're everyone <laughs> around them's almost at three digits. That's yeah. right. I'm, yeah, I'm calling them a smoky. <laughs> they're, they're fucking <laughs> ten times uh, uh, shorter than what the Pacers and uh, and Magic, Magic are. Yeah. Uh, but That's yeah, the, the fact that they're that they're seventh is going to be difficult. They play the Nets tomorrow. They'll be mm. really hoping to win that game because, as it stands, if they win and then either the Pacers or Magic lose, so yeah, Pacers have Atlanta, Magic have Bucks. They could finish fifth. They could finish fifth or sixth if they yeah, yeah if only one of them loses. But mm. avoid uh, the you know going out in two games in the play in yeah. so. They'll be, uh, they'll be gunning pretty hard in the morning to, to try and make sure they avoid a play-in. And I love what I've seen with from Maxi, kind of his growth, I guess, without Embiid. Um, uh, you know, being able to, I guess, take the lead in the team a little bit, but now building a bit more chemistry with Embiid. And, you know, mm. so, uh, last thing that anyone wants to see is 76ers have extra uh, good weapons on that team. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's the reason why they are the dark horse at the $19 there. Maxi's a dollar and six cents to win the most improved player of the year. Yeah. So pretty much sure. a shoe in. Yeah, a lot of these player awards now are, are, are pretty close to uh, being shoe ins. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get yeah. to Rudy Gobert in a sec. Rookies are probably done as well. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone's going to knock <laughs> off Wimby. <laughs> <laughs> Scoot Henderson. Uh, I think Wemby's got it. Yeah, yeah. unreal. Uh, Miami uh, gonna f- most likely finish in eighth spot. Uh, there, I think consistency has been their big issue. Probably the most interesting thing for Aussie fans will be tracking Patty Mills mm-hmm. and hoping uh, that they can uh, mm-hmm. sneak through uh, the the play-ins. Yeah, I won't write them off as long as Jimmy B's playing in that team. Mm-hmm. Just yep. again, he just needs to go on a run, get some form, and then he <laughs> lift all those guys. Well, up that's why they're the bookies got them at forty one. So. Yeah. The, Despite yeah. the fact that being eight, uh, the bookies have sort of got them on the same tier as the Knicks yep. and Cavs, and uh, not much belief for the Magic or Pacers. We just yeah, look how well they did last last yeah, play. They can do it from, that was yeah. from seventh, wasn't it? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So and then what? Chicago and Atlanta finish off making the, up the numbers. Making up the numbers. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you look at Atlanta's record; at, they're a tenth at thirty six and forty five, and then if you jump over to <laughs> over the West, uh, you know you've got. Currently, Golden State in that with a forty-five and thirty-six record. Yeah, it's not yeah. super fair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's right. just the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, uh, yeah. The battles in the West. Um, it's why, why, the way it seems from why the way seasons played out. But you know, come final time, everything can change. But uh, there's a lot of uh, big name and big talent over there in the West. Speaking yeah. of maybe not a big name, but a big game, Malachi Flynn <laughs> uh, has this for a record. The lowest PPG at 5.2 to ever put up a 50 burger. He had 50 last week. I was like, fuck yeah, that's mad. Might uh, jump on him in the next game. He uh, went 0 for 12 from the field <laughs> and I think he went to the I think he went to the line and he had two or something <laughs> on the game. So I was like, oh, back in the pine for you there, big man. <laughs> Uh, are Detroit also going to finish with the worst uh, record? Uh, it depends on tomorrow. They're currently a game behind Washington. Uh, I don't know who's got who there and what the nah, – well, it could happen because Boston play Wizards. Uh, mm-hmm. Boston presumably will sit their whole team, but they will still probably want to win, probably I, could still I'd win. imagine. Uh, so then it maybe comes down to who the Pistons have and what the tiebreaker is. Mm. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter in the NBA yeah, because of the draft lottery. Yes. Um, but, yeah, given the fact that what Detroit had won three games halfway through the season, mm. they've actually done a reasonable job of yeah, – uh, of better back end. Yeah, of trying to – But they're, they're, they're still definitely the worst, I think, for, well, just behind Washington there. And I think the Spurs won 20 games this year. Uh, yeah, Spurs yeah. 21, Portland 21. Yeah, so yeah. – the East was a bit stinky this year. So Pistons have the Spurs. Ah. Tomorrow. Oh, interesting. Tomorrow. Toilet bowl. East versus West yeah. toilet bowl. Mm-hmm. Yep. Speaking of the West, that's a nice little uh, segue to talk about this super-duper close three-way three way tie for the number one seed. <laughs> so 
Got to go through these games and yeah, we'll have a little look at it. Say it's first ever as well. Three-way tie for the number one seed with a game left. It's mm. the first time it's ever happened in the NBA. Mm. Uh, so crazy, but yeah. We've got OKC, Minnesota and Denver all sitting on the same record of 56 wins and 25 losses. OKC played Dallas tomorrow. Uh, it is in um, uh, Oklahoma City. SGA has been playing lights out. Josh Giddy's been really good. Yeah, in he's the last been getting triple ten, doubles. Yeah, so in the last 10 or so games. Been solid for him. I uh, do run into one of, one of the yeah. men's jerseys behind us here. Uh, Luca averaging 33.9. Mm -hmm. That's first in the NBA. He's 15th for rebounds at 9.2. And he's third, depending on how you break down the games. Uh, he's only behind Tyrese Halliburton and... Trey Young um, for for assists at nine point eight. There's a real argument that he is on paper the best player yeah, in the I was, NBA. This I was going to ask you, where's he at MVP chat? <laughs> How I, close is he? I think it's still going to be the man over my left <laughs> shoulder, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Joker. Joker. Mm. Um, I think he's got it. I think he's pretty short. Uh, I think in terms of teams, he's done nothing wrong. No, definitely he's, been, not. he's still been good. He's been excellent for them, but mm. uh, he's maybe more entertaining to watch as well. Yeah. And in terms of importance to it, well, no, Jack is pretty important to his yeah. team as well. Uh, I think Jack is going to win it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I think when Embiid went down, uh, the the writing was on the wall. Yeah, yeah. It's we've been talking about the big man and uh, big man that can do everything of changing the game, and Jack is at the top of that list. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's jump back up uh, to that three way tie. So, okay, see. Played Dallas, um, mm -hmm. Minnesota. Uh, can you find out who they've got tomorrow? Uh, they're 19 bucks to win the whole thing. Okay, so he was 17. Don't yep. know if we mentioned that. Rudy Gobert is pretty much a lock. He's a dollar and two cents. So let's give it mm. to him now for Defensive Player of the Year. Mm. Uh, that will be his fourth. Uh, he's averaging 13 rebounds a game, mm. two blocks per mm. game. Uh, there's two other players in NBA history that have won it uh, four times. Dikembe Mutombo in the 90s, Ben Wallace in the 2000s. Gobert most likely going to join them and may have that... Uh, that as his sole record moving forward, if he if he managed to jag a fifth one, yep, yep. Uh, uh, they've been so good. The Tim Walls, yeah. Of that, so. mm. yeah. Uh, the, the Remember when the trade happened and we're like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, last <laughs> season, why would you get another big with yeah. KT and last season it didn't work, but I think I guess with the emergence of Ant as well, yeah, um, and you know, kind of freed him up, and you know, Rudy can just play excellent de defense and. Towns can do what he needs to do, and you know between them, I think they've got the chemistry right this year. And I think it's proved by the fact they're currently tied in first place. Yeah, it's awesome to have yeah. like these two bigs and one such an offensive weapon and one mm -hmm. such a defensive mm -hmm. weapon, and you can kind of sort of split that. Yeah, like who do you who do you cut like Mark? Who do you, you can't double up on the big fellas? It's right, and you just leave all the court for Ant to go wild. So. Yeah, yeah, and then you've got this six foot four freak that can posterize anyone <laughs> in the league and yeah. uh, is up there with the most entertaining. Player in basketball at the moment, they're oh, yeah. they're fun to watch. Oh, definitely, definitely, and they're going to be a very tough uh, come finals. Yep, yep. Uh, they've got Phoenix tomorrow, so Phoenix will definitely be trying to win that as well to mm. avoid play in. Yep. Uh, so it's pretty fiery uh, games uh, tomorrow morning. They, they're early though. They're bloody mm. three a.m. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, last round of the NBA into the Masters. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Denver, they're four bucks, so bookies definitely have them uh, as the favourites in defending the champs. West. Defending champs mm. definitely look good uh, this time of the year. In the in the last few seasons, they finished with Memphis, mm. so I think at worst they're going to have a fifty-seven and, and twenty-five record. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be up to the T Wolves and uh, and OKC uh, to try and win their their uh, games there. Mm. Uh, I'd. It's, it's still a regular season game of basketball. Anything can happen, but you'd think Denver would be pretty um, set on trying yep. at least to get the one seed. Yep. Agree. Yep. Clippers uh, will finish fourth um, pending a loss and Dallas winning. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have the best team in the NBA. They're not super reliant on one player, but in terms of... They might have the most experience as well. I think definitely yeah. you can say that. Because they've got a lot of name and veteran talent on yeah. their team. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, again, uh, are they too old? Will be, will be a question because with that veteran talent, you know, there is a significant age factor in that. But yeah. they've, yeah, they've got champions all over the place. Mm -hmm. Harden, Man, Kawhi, PG-13, yeah. Zubach. Then, like, when your bench is, you know, Russell Westbrook, who's well, going to be a like, the best Hall, Hall of Famer. 
Uh, Norman Powell and Bones Highland uh, have been uh, nice additions in the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I've been impressed by Westbrook as well, kind of really buying into that six-man role of being, you know, the best man to come off the bench. And um, he's been really good in that spot. It's, I, I think it's kind of freed him up, maybe uh, helps with managing his energy and the like. But, yeah, he just comes on live wire and um, gets buckets. Norman Powell, actually, uh, sh- shortish uh, at 21s to win the sixth man of the year. Mm, yeah. It's mostly Malik Monk and Naz Reid. Uh, but, yeah, in terms of like a team sort of chemistry yeah. kind of um, viewpoint, I, I quite like the Clippers. Yep. Dallas, we spoke about it before, before big ass going to OKC, but uh, there's a man called Luca that'll have something to say about it. They're nine teens to win the whole thing. Mm. Uh, and then Phoenix is in seventh, but we're going to talk about them first because they're at 21, so maybe mm. in that tier mm. above. Yep. Uh, again, we talk about... Name know, value, yeah. Yeah, name value when you've got a team that's got Devin Booker and KD in it. Like, you imagine... Paul's going to play with them too. Yeah, so exactly. You imagine so. they, they might might go okay uh, come finals but uh, or come playoffs at least, but uh, it's going to be hard if they have to do it from seventh, that's for sure. Mm. Can we go back to Dallas and talk about Exxon? Yeah, he's actually been. He's playing pretty for, good for, for as an uh, for Australian fans. Actually, because <laughs> he hit the game winner the other day, which is crazy to think that you, you know Lucas double covered and mm-hmm. he gets a free look and they were confident enough to give it to him and he drains a three to win that game. But he's uh, he's been pretty good for them. Like I think um, did he go. I think he went Europe. He played a couple of years in Europe and he's come back. And he was he, in the wilderness, man. Yeah, he got a, got some good game time over there. Got. I guess his confidence back, mm. Uh, mm. got to play some pro ball and he's come back and he's been really good and fit really well into their system. And, yeah, not saying like he's uh, the glue that's making <laughs> Luke no, and Kyrie better. But, but he's a handy addition. He's definitely been a handy addition to that team and he's been getting them some decent points as well to be involved. Played in 55 games, started 17, uh, averaging a tick under 20 minutes uh, and a tick under eight points per game. Certainly a, a good contributor to uh, to that uh, dynamic there. Yeah. But um, another Auss- Aussie to watch coming into the finals. Yeah, and coming yeah. into an Olympics as well. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, Kyrie, uh, I think... Uh, Sorry, I was just going to say, you mentioned Olympics. Did you see that Ben Simmons wasn't even in the Boomer squad? Yeah, well, he's had so, surgery. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, would not be very, very unlikely that he'll be ready, um, but... It's a sh- yeah. yeah, I did see that squad and I was like, wow, like our front court's like going to be pretty elite, mm. but I think we're missing um, a few a few uh, bigs. I think yeah. I fucked that up. I think I said front court. Our back court's going to be pretty good. elite. I think we're missing. You've seen the bigs in the front court. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie's averaging 26 points per game. Uh, he's actually been lights out addition for yes. the Mavs. Mavs are going good. Can't deny that. What about um, Pels? Because they're the team in the middle there in six. Um, they will – who do they play? They lock down six or could they potentially they could sneak a fifth? the Lakers. Ooh, oh, that's spicy. Oh, that's right. They do play. Yeah. Because the Lakers are trying to yeah. avoid tenth. They need to win to maintain eighth. Yep. Because they've got the Kings and Golden State chasing them down. Yeah, it's wild. Yes. it's so so <laughs> tight. Uh, I think the Pels will probably be in that sa- that next sort of tier down there at fifty one. So mm. it'll be them, Lakers, Golden State, and then the bookies aren't giving Sacramento any chance no. at one fifty one. But it's so tight, it's so oh, fun. Beam me up, bro! Come on, beam me up. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely looked better at the back in the last year, start of this season. The old Kings. Yeah. What do you think about the Lakers? Mate, they're playing good. They're fourteen and seven since uh, the start of March. Uh, I think D'Angelo Russell, D'Lo's yeah, sort of been a little underrated. I uh, saw a meme or a, just a screenshot of um, mm-hmm. of uh, of a post of uh, of him going up against some some of the more elite guys in terms of uh, assists uh, and uh, efficiencies. Uh, he's doing really really well. Uh, so they go to New Orleans tomorrow. We'll be trying to win. Uh, they could finish as high as seventh. Could finish mm-hmm. as low as tenth. Kings and Warriors, who do they play? Uh, so the Kings play Portland. Yep. Mm-hmm. So should win. Should win. Warriors uh, play the Jazz. So also should win, but yeah. they'll, they're a game behind. Oh, no, they're the same. They're the same. Uh, game behind. Game Lakers. behind. On, yeah. Yeah. So, so that is a very big game for Lakers. Yeah, no <laughs> one can afford They like, Everyone will be trying to win in the morning, essentially. Yep. Try and get the highest seating possible. Mm. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, it's been a, a crazy year. It's definitely long, so it's fun when it gets to this time. Uh, and maybe w- one of the best additions to the NBA this year is the alien that is Victor Wembanyama. 
uh, first player in NBA history to uh, put up 1,500 points, 250 blocks, and 100 three-pointers uh, made. That's presumably in one season. Yeah, he had 123 or 28 um, uh, threes made this season, and uh, he, he had a 100-plus assist as well. Like, he's... Yeah, he's just been a he's built an different. Unreal, unreal talent, the, the the big lad, and um, uh, it'll be interesting. Like I think we talked about last pod, you know, what's the future of basketball kind of looking like? Are we going in the freaks of the seven footers? <laughs> um, uh, you know, time will tell. But he's been unreal, and it took he single handedly beat the Nuggets the other night too. Um, uh, the, I think Gordon gave him a shove in the back, and it really kind of pissed him off and set the fire on him. Mm. Uh, and then he went out and scored like 17 straight points for him. So he's a friend. Um, and yeah, yeah. blocking everything else. And there yeah, are just the wingspan. It, he, he's just nuts. Have you seen some of the block stats as well? Like him yeah. versus teams. Over, yeah. Like, uh, he's, he's got more blocks than half the NBA does. If their whole team, yeah. he's going up against them. Look, it's seven for four. You'd expect him to get yeah. a few blocks, yeah. but uh, yeah. The, and the amount of like five block games he's had mm-hmm. is the record. Mm-hmm. He's uh, he's been incredible. It's been fun to watch, and uh, hopefully uh, they can get a little bit of help and uh, go back to where that proud franchise normally is, and that's uh, playing playoff basketball. Yeah, I had a quick look at the top ten prospects for the twenty twenty four NBA. Mm. Uh, there's three seven footers mm. uh, coming in the top ten. Uh, and the number one uh, in that list is seven foot two. So uh, you might have another big running mate. <laughs> the they, the, era, get, get the, the era of pick, the big but, man. Yeah, but, uh, you know, uh, they might not have yeah, his sort of mobility and talent, but, you know, the seven footers are coming. Well, and, and even, you know, those there or thereabouts, the seven foot, you're just looking at Chet Holmgren's uh, yeah. numbers. Been a, a freak, you know, missed his uh, first year with that. Uh, I think it was Liz Frank in his yep. foot. Mm. Uh, Shangun for the Rockets before he mm-hmm. went mm-hmm. down, uh, been elite. So mm. definitely uh, moving into uh, an era of these thin, mobile uh, bigs mm. uh, that have got pretty reasonable handles and uh, and can do it all. Yep. I can say it in three years from now we'll be having chats about uh, should we be raising the hoop up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it's to, too easy. We'll get to golf in a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's too easy. Um, I'm just looking at Chet. He is like 60 odd blocks behind Wemby at 189. So just, yeah. Still impressive. That's dominant. Yeah. He's been. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Wemby, uh, you know, maybe people would be talking more about Chet. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. look, yeah, there's only one that can w- wear a ring this year, and, uh, mm-hmm. and that's, that's Chet Holmgren. Mm-hmm. Uh, who do you think is playing finals? Do you think it's going to be the Nuggets and Celtics, or do you, would you like to throw a Smokey in uh, in the mix? Yeah, I don't. Th- I th- if the Bucks get hot, maybe they make a run. But I think for the East, you just lock it down and say uh, Celtics are the red hot favorite for that side. The West, man, who, who fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, any any team in that top ten, maybe outside, say Kings and Pels, who would be long odds, uh, mm. could really make a deep run. Um, and there's lots of fun opportunities there. You know, I'll back the Denver and I'll back the Nuggets to, to go back to back and repeat. But uh, like I said, any of those Forbidding. teams, yeah, I'd love mm. to see OKC and, and Mavs, of course, do well for the Aussie flavour. Or, of course, I'm a, I'm like Miami too yep. um, for for on the other side with Jimmy B. But, uh, you know, for Patty Mills. But, uh, you know, yeah. Um, uh, it's good to have a bit of Aussie flavour, of course, mm. floating around Definitely. Um, in, in the finals. Who's Joe England's playing for at the moment? Uh, Utah still? No. no. He left Utah. He is still you in the be, league. You going to beat me to it? You see that one because he, uh, he went down the court and did like the laziest Joe Ingles yeah. uh, dribble and then goes past Wemby and puts yeah. it in? Yeah. <laughs> he is playing for... Or Orlando, he's at Magic. Magic, okay. yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, good mental blank there. What was <laughs> I thinking? Oh, Monks, I was going to say. So you, you're going C's Nugs. You go yeah, I'll go C's Nugs. What the? Uh, what the? That, bo- that's my most likely. And bit, yeah, there's plenty of other scenarios. Monks. Yeah, uh, I think that makes the most sense in terms of like who's been through finals. I'll probably, but I'll probably go Clippers. Oh, cl- yep. Clippers. Celtics. Celtics. Clippers? Yeah. Mm. yeah. We uh, played out the like series that. last year. Was it no, who play, who did Nugs play in the finals? Uh, they they played the Heat, didn't they? Was the Heat made that run? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm trying to remember. Uh, Sounds about right. I'm fairly sure they played the Heat. 
Marcus, Sorry. if you wouldn't mind chasing that up. What they, about you, Pep? Because the heat, heat went from like seventh. Yes. That's my memory. Um, yeah, it was heat. Was heat? Yep. What was it in uh, games? Was it 4 1? 4 1. 4 yep. 1. Yep. And where is it? Can you click on that? Will it say where the heat come from? Or yeah. even if you just go to the, were they in the first round? Does it have their seeding? Seeding? I feel like they finished seventh. Anyways, you can chase that up. Uh, I'll be boring. I'll go Celtics as well. I think there's a lot of pressure building on them uh, because the expectation is that they'll cruise through the mm. East here. Mm. Uh, but when you've won 14 games more than the second seed, you really probably should. And they've only lost four at home. So they're going to get, you know, in each series that they play, four home games. Yep. So they've got to lose. Yep what they've lost in the season at the, t- at the TD Garden. So I don't yeah. see it happening. I think the Celtics go through in the East. I hope so, agree. I'm going to just try and be a little bit fun. I'll go <laughs> Minnesota. Um, it's not that fun. They're in fucking second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, they but are a fun team, though. Yeah, yeah. they're shorter than uh, – or they're longer, I should say, mm-hmm. than the Nugs and the Clippers. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'll go them with the uh, rapid ascency of the Ant-Man and Edwards, the Defensive Player of the Year, and a pretty handy mm-hmm. big in KAT. I think they've got mm-hmm. their big three. Oh, and yeah. uh, I think they could, could probably go the whole way and be fun for the city of uh, Minnesota. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. believe the T-Wolves have ever won the NBA. Is that a monkey? Give me an answer. No, that's, <laughs> a, that's a how'd you go with uh, where the Heat finished last year? Yes. And I'll uh, look that T Wolves one up. They finished seventh. Yeah, good yeah, right there. Matt, back yourself in here, Peppy. There you go. Uh, yeah, there you go, Max. Have the T Wolves ever won? And my laptop's going to die soon. So <laughs> we'll be running off yours there, Monks. Uh, throughout their history, the Minnesota Timberwolves have never re- even reached the NBA Finals. So they've been to the Western yeah, Conference right. Finals back in 04. That would have been KG T Wolves, I'd imagine, yep. 20 years ago. Uh, but not, not they've never ever been there. Mm. So making yeah. it would be a, would be a massive Huge thing. Huge for Minnesota. Mm. Have we talked about all the ownership stuff going on with them at the moment? Yeah, there's a bit. Mm. I don't think we've spoken about it. Um, no. Have you got a story there? Uh, I think I think the headline of the story was A Rod and his partner mm-hmm. uh, had the opportunity to buy out right, the Timberwolves yep. from the. We talked about that last Arnold. year. Mm. We definitely yep. talked about that. Um, so the date that they needed to allegedly the date they needed to front up the money was a couple weekends ago. Um, they didn't mm. have the money, but they have got all the workings. Just like, ask your They've essentially <laughs> got the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's semantics around. It's all legal now. I think there's yeah, semantics okay. around like what they actually needed to provide by the deadline, mm-hmm. whether mm-hmm. it was intent actual, or actual cash. Actual yeah. cash or intent. Yeah. Um, so that's go, all going through now. Um, the current majority owner is look. basically, because the team's basically doubled or tripled in value oh, or something yeah. like that. So yeah. it's like, um, it's you didn't give me the money, point. so I'm going to up the price now or yeah. something along those lines. So playing hardball. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in terms of like the front office management and mm. all the different, all the buying powers, I guess, um, from the ownership and what that means. Imagine if they um, have a ship as well. Like, the, the, yeah, surely the the franchise net worth goes skyrockets mm, as well. If they so, win yeah. the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. definitely. You know, Winning helps, especially and yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So their valuation will uh, be a, a higher, definitely a lot higher than it had been in recent years. So. Definitely, and like a lot of that would come from a Rodney's partner sort of coming into the team, mm-hmm. changing up the culture, I guess. So, mm-hmm. what do they do if they now don't get what they want out of the deal? Do yeah. they walk or yeah? So it could be very very turbulent times. Definitely a watch this space there in the front office uh, at the Wolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Play-in starts in a few days' time. Uh, next pod, we'll uh, know who the, uh, the is in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit of cricket. The IPL is going at the moment. Uh, in the notes here, I've just highlighted a few of the Grab good the performances, table, but we don't have to go through them one by one. Uh, anything stood out for you lads so far in the IPL this series? <sighs> If you're at Coley, good. Yeah, again, <laughs> again uh, I think he's back. Yeah, I haven't checked overnight, but before last night, uh, he was leading in terms of runs. Mm. Made 113 not of just 72 balls uh, in their game against Rajasthan, uh, in which Josh Butler also made an unbeaten 100. 
Uh, so some big names firing. Uh, last ep, we spoke about uh, the 277 that mm-hmm. Sunrise Hyderabad put up, which was smashed the old smashed uh, IPL record. KKR went within a bee stick actually this week. They put up 272. Jeez. So that's the second highest IPL score in history. It was the West Indians, Sunil Nareen, 85 of 39. Dre Russ, 41 of mm-hmm. 19 in that one for KKR. <laughs> against our poor Delhi Caps, uh, and they won that one reasonably comfortably. So some massive scores getting put up uh, in uh, in this one so far. Uh, Coley still uh, at the top, top there, there in yep. terms of runs, uh, 319 from his six knocks. Uh, Ryan Parag uh, at 284. Sanju Sampson, 264. Shubman Shubman's Gill, so 255. Ooh. The top... Six, seven are all Indians, Indians until we yeah. get down to Tristan Stubbs, mm. South African mm-hmm. fella, who has really um, impressed for Delhi so far. And good to see, obviously, Rishabh. as fans of cricket, as fans of the Delhi Capitals, uh, mm. to see Rishabh Punt mm. back and also scoring runs after that horrific accident, uh, which kept him out of the game for, well, what, over six months. Yeah, what's, yeah. That, what's up on old Davey Warner? He's had a... It was a rough period oh, since we last talked. Not really. Oh, yeah, he he did start off the season well, but he's still got two fifties, I think, doesn't he? He had that fifty two off thirty five. He's got the one fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's what striking at nearly one hundred and forty. He's the top Aussie, though, isn't he? he yeah, he is, and he's the yeah. top top Aussie. So it sort of speaks volumes to where the Aussie sticks are at. Well, yeah, Ma- Maxie, Maxie's think, been terrible. Yeah. Mitch Marsh got dropped uh, mm. for Jake Fraser McGurk, who. Made fifty five uh, yeah. on his IPL debut, so definitely good for uh, for old McGurk there. But yeah, Maxi and Mitch Marsh uh, not playing well by their very lofty uh, uh, standards. Mm. Going over the bowlers, Yuzi Chahal uh, seems like perennially uh, yeah. up the, near 11? the top uh, for for polls. Boomerah is on ten. He's I think he had five for twenty one in one Jeez. one game, so yeah, he yeah did. did half the damage in one. Uh, Kashigo Rabida, the best of the foreign bowlers, along with Mustafa Sir. Rahman at a new club. He's at CSK. Uh, and then if we got to... Where's, where's the Aussies? Yeah, you got to go scroll. down a, a while as well. So no, yeah, none of the scroll, Aussies scroll, really scroll, lighting scroll, it scroll, on scroll, fire. Scroll. There is Paddy, Paddy Cummins. Cummins. Five games. He's got, what, six, 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 six poles at 24 yeah. at the moment. Uh, so Paddy been the best of the Aussies. Uh, no one really lighting it on fire. The concern for the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> nah, not really. It's the I, like it's the IPL. No, like I, th- I think Maxwell and and Marsh not really firing is a touch concerning. Yeah. But given their overall, form, hope some form. <laughs> yeah, well, imagine, recent form is like oh crap. Bro, they their only, summer was good. They though. only rock up for World Cups. Yeah, We've true. seen what this Australian <laughs> team does. Yeah, they're on the holiday over there, what, bro. Exactly <laughs> on the Kingfishers. Wait, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Wait till I've got one leg and it's an IPL must win uh, uh, an, uh, an IPL a uh, World Cup must, must win, win game against Afghanistan. I'll go out there on one leg and do the best mm. fucking white ball performance of all time. Yep, at Maxi yep. and same with Marsh. He's loved the the pressure uh, mm. when he's been wearing green and gold. They yeah, just haven't been able to the transform it into their IPL uh, teams this year. Yep. I see Stein got a fifty eight there. Yeah, so Stein made Stein's been going okay, which is yeah. I think is the most. Important because mm. he, he wasn't he, making the team. Well, he's the only one that's really struggled mm. when he's been wearing Australian colours over the last few years. So good to see the storm there or thereabouts at least. And Jake Fraser McGurk as well. Mm-hmm. You know, the future's very Future, very definitely. bright for the young lad. Uh, getting a bit of coaching there from uh, from Ricky Ponting. You know, there's not many uh, other uh, mm. well, at least from an Australian perspective, there's probably no one uh, that you'd rather be coached by than Ricky Ponting. So, what's, what's the table then look like, Jimmy? Yeah, it makes if you wouldn't mind bringing that one up. Yeah. We're sort of yeah, approaching right. halfway. Royals, Royals. Yeah, Rajasthan, uh, two games ahead at the moment from KKR, CSK, mm. Lucknow, Sunrise, Gujarat. So completely congested there. Uh, and then into Mumbai, Punjab, and Delhi. And then despite all the Coley's runs, RCB is coming dead last. Yep. So they're bowling, mm. obviously, yeah. a little bit lacklustre so far. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. well. Mumbai Indians, I think, won two on the trot since we last talked. So yep. they, they were at the bottom, so they've moved their way up. But yeah, still pretty close. But Royals, I think, you know, have gotten well out in front there. Interesting as well. The tradi- so, so traditional powerhouses have struggled uh, a little bit. They do have the last a two game, seasons. two game played more than the uh, Kolkata Knight Riders though. Because they've only had, yep. they're also only have had one loss, but they've played two less games. That's right. KK are probably the most uh, impressive so far, given that they're second and they're two games behind Rajasthan. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
So, yeah, they play a total of 14, so approaching that halfway mark. Still uh, too early for to be rubbing teams out, uh, but definitely some guys that'll, that'll want to impress. Mm-hmm. Uh, and from an, from an Australian perspective, uh, yeah, Maxi. Uh, and will the will the Bison be able to break back into that uh, Delhi Cavs team? Yep. Uh, I suppose uh, time will tell. Any games overnight tonight? Because they often play two on a Sunday. Yep, yeah, there's a few. Yep, so Lucknow yep. uh, and and KKR and Mumbai yep. and CSK will be the late ones. So yep. I imagine that uh, that LSG KKR game is probably starting or close to start. I think so. Yeah, swim. The emphasis in TV might be going. Yeah, there we go. So, yep. Monks, he's quick, mate. He's quick. Sometimes he's quick. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> LSG, 5 for 139. Can you expand that scorecard if you wouldn't mind? Uh, KKR winning the toss, electing to field. Go to, go to scorecard. Oh, sorry. sorry yep. he, yeah. he wanted to look at the... Um, yeah, who's, who's, who's done it, well. who's done what well. Um, uh, scrolling down. Thank you. Uh, Quentin de Kock, not much. Ra- oh. K. Rahul, 39. That uh, Ayush Badoni uh, is probably worth mentioning. Uh, probably not a very familiar name for Aussies, but just another Indian that we're going to have to watch out for. He's <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> pretty handy. And uh, Puran out there, he's 35 of 24. He could definitely put up a quick 50 or 60. Give it, give it a couple of years and India are going to be asking to have a second team attending these tournaments. They could do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's, if India A was allowed to play at Big tournaments. Mm-hmm. Well, other than the fact that we are the fathers of India in big <laughs> tournaments. <laughs> yeah. clip, clip that one up. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, at least from a depth perspective, yeah, they're, yeah, they're probably already there. So Starkey going all right. One for 23 from his three, mm. so probably got one more uh, to mm-hmm. bowl there. Yeah. IPL, halfway through. We'll keep an eye on it. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, as as we just mentioned, it's not long till the, uh, the World Cup, so a lot will be playing into how this uh, exciting World Cup is going to play out in the Caribbean and US and A. Yep. Yeah. Let's do a little bit of soccer. <laughs> not much has changed <laughs> since last week in terms of the EPL still being a three-horse race, mm-hmm. but uh, a few teams have sort of uh, fumbled a little bit. Liverpool had a chance to get a win against United. They drew. Tottenham mm. got the win last week uh, mm. against Not Forest, but then looked disgusting overnight, getting spanked 4-0 uh, by, uh, by Newcastle. So Tottenham had a good chance to really cement uh, that fourth position. They mm. haven't. Uh, and then Aston Villa, Arsenal play uh, tonight. That's massive uh, in terms of both Champions League and the league uh, moving forward. I just keep getting this feeling that City are doing the right things at the right time. And their run home was uh, very, very good for them. Favourable compared yeah, to favorable. Uh, Liverpool and Arsenal. Yeah, they had at least one or two challenges, whereas um, nearly the whole bottom end of the, the table is what City's run home is. So. Mm. Have you got that Man City run home yet, Mark? Can you yeah, just, bring, yeah bring that up. Uh, do they play anyone of note? No, I think that was uh, the thing. They don't play anyone. Tottenham. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, but, well, they don't, but it's a fair point. Like Tottenham is the best team that they play. Mm. So they've got Brighton, not Forest, Wolves, Fulham, Tottenham, West Ham. Uh, I, I feel like I've seen this movie before. Yeah. I, I really do. It's currently two points ahead. Mm. Uh, yeah. Liverpool's a game behind with Crystal Palace tonight. Yeah. Yeah, Villa and Tottenham, as you said, they're basically tied at four spot at the moment on 60 points. See Li- Liverpool getting touched up in the Europa League halfway mm. through the week by Atalanta at Anfield. I and missed it. And it was um Oh, like a weird, like load management kind of game. Like, yeah, uh, that, that's yeah. Like, yeah. Salah didn't Salah, play he played the second half. Oh, okay. Um, so Lazabi, yeah. or yeah. however you say that, Hungarian fella, he yeah. only he only played half. Um, Darwin Nunes only, only played half. Uh, so yeah, I think like it wasn't full like Europa tanking, but it was mm. like we want to try and fucking win the league, <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't overload We've our got, stars, yeah. yeah, but yeah, more important things to do, 100%, exactly. but not, not a good look either to get. Yeah, towed by a sort of mid-tier Italian mm. team in, in Europa, that's for sure. Mm. Uh, yeah, I th- think it's cities, but I'd like to be proven wrong. What's yeah. Arsenal's run home? Huge game tonight against Villa. Huge tonight. They've also got uh, Tottenham in a couple of weeks. Well, a few London derbies there. They've got Chelsea and yeah, Tottenham. Tottenham. And United. United, yeah. So upcoming. so Tougher. Yeah, tougher definitely than cities. What's Liverpool's yep. like? 
I think theirs was very similar. Very little similar. Yeah, they've got um, Palace, Fulham, Everton, yeah, West Ham, Spurs, Villa, Wolves. So for mine, Arsenal's got the tough, toughest run. Liverpool yeah. in the middle. City's got the easiest run going yeah. home. Uh, Sheffield so, stuck at the bottom. I think they probably they're, they're cooked. They're gone, I think. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Burnley at twenty points, probably very close to cooked as well. Uh, Luton, I think it's a bit interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, Luton, Forest, and Everton all within two, uh, two points. Yeah, 27, yeah. 26, and twenty five. So, yeah, uh, any one of those could uh, sneak out. Love to see Luton hold on. You know, so having, having said that, Everton have two games in hand over the others, uh, and same for say Crystal Palace who. They're at 30. Yeah, well, that looks like um, a four-horse race then, doesn't it? With yeah. with really being Forest, Luton, Burnley, Sheffield. Mm. And well, of course, Everton go out and lose all those games and <laughs> bring them back into contention. <laughs> but, yeah. Could you imagine? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, yes, most likely going to be between those four. And I think, uh, did I see Wrexham got promoted up a yeah, league so as well that, for so the second year in a row? So yeah. they're going to League One. Yeah. I also saw they were in some financial troubles struggling a How bit How the too. fuck does that work with a big Netflix series? <laughs> uh, well, I... <laughs> yeah. I or is it um, uh, trying to pay back some of the money they're owed to the guys that invested in it? Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, their financials aren't great overall, but they're obviously doing well enough. Um, uh, I, I, I think it's kind of a thing where they're saying, hey, how are they going to pay pay back Reynolds? And um, I can't remember his actor's friend's name. I haven't seen the series, but I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Rob Nuckel. That's him. Yeah. yeah. You know, how much have they invested yep. in it and that for like that. But also I think Ryan Reynolds probably doesn't give a fuck about if he gets his money back. He's probably just happy that the teams are doing well and yeah, getting, think, getting promoted like up through the league. Yeah, passion sort of perspective yeah. he would want them to. I find that surprising though that they could be in uh, in financial difficulties. Well, they're a club that does make a lot of money and then also being promoted up the leagues very, very quickly. So they don't haven't grown the fan base maybe um, as quickly as their ascendancy up through the leagues. Interesting. Have Wrexham changed League Two's financial something? Mike's just changed it. But, no, uh, I'm trying to find recent news. Uh, is it all uh, from that's all, that two that's days? All, that's all promotion stuff. Yeah, this is recent. Can't sign players on championship wages. Mm. Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney given Wrexham something. Yeah. I think uh, read into it, obviously, rapid uh, ascension up through the English football pyramid probably has a few uh, Mm. sort of things that are less desirable and probably getting big name talent in uh, is something that that, that they'll have to face. But, yeah, I would have thought with all this uh, sort of hoopla around the Netflix and, um, you know, global interest uh, wouldn't be hurting them uh, that much. Yeah, uh, probably depends how you look at the financials as well. If you're just looking at how the club's doing, it's like – yeah, they're growing quicker than they can probably pay people. So um, <clears throat> that may probably make sense, but maybe the Netflix money is off on the side kind of thing. For sure. But Obviously, yeah. three big front office, you know, t- oh, t- yeah. tycoons. Well, we've got one accountant at least. So, <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the maths though sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true, true. You find anything else there? Um, no, not too much. I think it's, it's probably more so. Like they've obviously invested to get to the club to where they are now. Yep. Mm. Where do they find the money to sign new players to get to that next level? Yeah. Um, Can they keep this ascendancy? Yeah, because I suppose, or, or a, I suppose a lot of it's sort of they've been signing players on goodwill, like yeah. come build a team, you're going to be playing for Ryan Reynolds and yeah, you might, you'd be on Netflix, etc. Yeah. yeah, but now that's sort of becoming the norm and how, yeah, how did you just get the team to the next level? Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. So how far away is League One from... Premier, is it still... It's only two levels. Two? Two levels. Uh, league, it goes League Two, which they were in League One this year. Mm-hmm. Then they go to the Championship, where it actually yep. starts to become a fair bit of money. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then it's the, the Premier. Premier League after that. So, yeah. It's still a crazy rise. Shooting, shooting up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 100%. From where they were a couple of years ago. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, a bit of Champions League. Uh, mm-hmm. Quarterfinals, plenty mm-hmm. of goals. Uh, amongst you wouldn't mind just scrolling down on the main one, because my computer is dead. Uh, thank you. Arsenal, Bayern, two oh. apiece. In, uh, in that one. It's going to be tough now for the Gooners have to go over to Munich to try and face uh, the former kings of the Bundesliga. Uh, Leverkusen all but wrapped up uh, now there in Bundesliga. So fun, I think, for anyone that's not a Munich fan to see someone else win in Germany. And it's going to be tough, I think, for Arsenal to, to go there. Yeah. Um, 
uh, as well with the the two away goals mm-hmm. for Bayern. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then an, an interesting one there between Real and City finishing three apiece. Some really nice goals in that one with Phil Foden scoring a rocket and then Valverde a nice uh, volley at the end. PSG uh, going down at home to Barca, 2-3. So Barca with a uh, return leg you'd think should be okay there and Atletico getting a win uh, as well there. So uh, the Spanish teams uh, all going reasonably well. Mm-hmm. Going to be tough uh, I think for for Arsenal uh, going to Germany, but City get to go home with th- with three away goals, so I could certainly see yeah, them could, putting away Real yeah. in the uh, in the return leg. Yep. Uh, I think that's about it for about it. the we'll Champions League. Shocking. Next round is this week. This week. Yep. yep. So we'll know in a few days who the semi finals will be. Draw probably won't come out till oh, I don't know start of May or something. Yeah, what was the first game? First leg was the uh, end of first. April, so the draw will come out well before then. <coughs> yeah, that's only two weeks away, so it's mm. yeah, yeah. The actually, might, draw might actually be like next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, will be held on the fifteenth. Ah, it says was held. That doesn't make sense. A uh, semi final, yeah, does make sense. After the quarter final draw, first legs will be playing. Oh, it's already set. Oh, that's oh, also the winner winners of quarterfinal yeah, two yeah, yeah. versus winners of quarterfinal <laughs> four. So at on the SQ, <laughs> learn how to read. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so. Atletico and and Borussia get Real and City. Is that right? If you Hang go on. back to where uh, you were, two and four. Ball? Yeah. So two and four would be just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> PSG <laughs> or Barca will be up against Real and Man City, and then Arsenal or no, they've already done it in that bracket for us, bro. So, so oh here, no, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> wow. Learn how to look on the <laughs> SQ. <laughs> so, Atletico and Borussia <laughs> get PSG or Barca. Yeah. Arsenal and Bayern get Real or City. Yeah, yeah, they've linked it up. Also, if you scroll back down, there, if you just left it there, we would have been sweet there too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, Too we much. live and we learn. <laughs> <laughs> live, live, laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to speak on the SQ. Uh, I was confused with the quarterfinal two. Yeah, it's right. lots of numbers. Yeah. It's three. Big numbers, yeah. guys. We don't we don't handle numbers well. Well, I think with that, let's go into the final round. <laughs> There's some Champions League shit on. Yeah. Uh, the other one. Yeah, it's UFC. 300, one of the biggest events in UFC history. And I'll tell you what, boys, it did not disappoint. I thought there was uh, yeah. some sick fights. Started at 8 o'clock this morning, finished at 4 p.m. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, a bit disappointing. My wife that wasn't super happy, but who cares? Well, it was good. <laughs> the early prelims weren't on KO, so they had to get a few illegal streams going uh, for those early ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, should we start? Down there, do you think, and then work our way up to well, the main event? Maybe we run through them very quickly. Yep. Uh, mentioned yep. what happened. Uh, Figgy got the submission there over for Cody Gambrant. Um, Garbrandt. Garbrandt, uh, which was, I think, you could see Figgy was kind of struggling a little bit with Cody's power, but um, when he got to the ground and he did his work and could took the back and finished this one off, so it was pretty good there. Then we went into the bloodbath that was uh, Bobby Green versus mm. Jim uh, fucking Miller, but unfortunately for... Familiar, who was on the wrong end of this one, uh, having fought at the previous two um, centuries of <laughs> UFC. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having now 44 UFC fights, he's trying to get to, to 50, but... Do you think that's smart as a 40-year-old uh, to know, try and fight considering, six more fights? Considering he had like a two-inch... fighting. Yeah, mm. he had a two-inch gash under his nose, uh, mm. under his eye under this one. Like, yeah, and Bobby Green pieced him up for basically the whole... Whole three rounds outside, um, one big shot from Jim. Like it, it'd be tough, but you know, there's probably some fun fights in there. Mm. Um, his records up and down. Like he, he hasn't been on a huge winning streak or anything. It's you know, there's losses followed by wins followed by losses. Um, so it's nothing new here for Jim. And if the UFC, he put some fun fights though. So like mm. this, you know, on the early prelims, a bit of a bloodbath there. Didn't take a de- backward step. Fought out the whole three rounds. Is why he's still in the UFC and why he still gets on cards. Uh, Jessica Andrade uh, getting the uh, close win against Marina Rodriguez. They're pretty highly ranked there in straw weights. That's yep. four versus six. Andrade definitely making former another yeah, yeah run to 13, try, try and get the belt back. Yeah, it's crazy. Or like the first fight of the night. Like, mm-hmm. You know, you got Figgy there as a, mm. as a former. Versus champ. Cody. Cody was a former champ as well. So. Yeah, was he f- uh, interim or no? Uh, no, he he yeah, won. A, he he yeah. beat uh, Dominic Cruz to take the belt and then right. lost to TJ. Very good to memory. Pilshaw, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so 
Lots of champions. Uh, Crazy I thought, early prelims. I thought Andrade wrestled better through this, mm. uh, which I think is the reason why she got the decision. Uh, she might have got not have got all the striking exchanges from Rodriguez, but her power really um, uh, uh, you know, shook uh, Rodriguez through this and you know, caused moments in the fight where she was definitely, you'd see, taking over the momentum um, before Rodriguez would set the, the range and stay on the outside and mm. try, use her mm. jab and try to, to piece her up. But I think the scorecards kind of reflected that, yes, maybe a split decision, but I, I had thought uh, Andrade was doing the better – Better of this, um, she had the better visuals, of course, with the takedowns, with the bigger shots, um, over the, the point fighting of just landing punches. Mm. Renato Moicana didn't leave it up to the judges to decide, he got the TKO against Jalen Turner. Uh, it's a three win streak now for, for Renato. Bit of unfortunate for Turner here because he got a big knockdown in the first round and mm. uh, thought the fight was over, started celebrating, and oh, really, um, but uh, um, the money man uh, got straight back up, uh, and the ref didn't stop it, and they continued fighting, and then went in the second round and got the TKO victory. So, uh, mm. yeah, a bit unfortunate there for for Turner, who I think he – did he come off a uh, – did he fight Hooker last? I feel like he fought Hooker last yeah, and had no kicked him into oblivion but ended up losing that fight. Was that the one where Hooker broke his arm and still yes. won? Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that he, was. Yeah, he lost to Hooker yeah. back yeah. in July last year. Yeah. Uh, I, that's, I, not, that's not the one where he broke his arm. That's a different one, hey? No, I think they broke they broke Hooker's arm in that fight. Was it? Yeah, because um, that was a was a war, and uh, the fact that Hooker held on for that fight. Um, yeah, maybe my point being, Turner, you know, was beating the brakes off Hooker for this, but then ended up, still ended up losing. So I feel like that Hooker one was more recent. Monks chasing it up. You got to keep scrolling, bar. Oh, yeah, you can do it there. Uh, while you do that, or you got an answer? Uh, well, the, the start of the uh, – uh, so th- this, that, that first four was the ones that weren't on yes. the pay-per-view. Yep. And then you got the free ones here. Mm-hmm. On the, the prelims? Of, yep, the prelims. So uh, Diego Lopez getting the win against uh, Sodic Yusuf. Yeah, flying up uh, the rankings. He will get a ranking now, mm. but he's definitely flying up uh, on his three-win streak and he's been knocking out fools left, right and centre. So um, he – Landed some big uppercuts in this um, and then followed it up on the ground to get the win. So uh, big future ahead of him. He's already, you know, he's on that uh, championship track, as they all are, but he's very much saying, I'm going to be the champion in the not too distant future. So definitely, he's, he's uh, definitely got the it's talent. It's looking that way. Yusuf, uh, on the other hand, is he's on a three-fight um, slide and maybe he's at risk of losing his ranking mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. Women's bantamweight, uh, Kayla Harrison defeating Holly Holm. She looks huge, although making the weight, she looked kind of gaunt on the uh, yeah. on the scale. Big challenge she? for her to make a weight, but she did. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, everyone made the weight in this fight. All mm. fights were on. And, Crazy, eh? Um, yeah, it was all very, I guess, you'll see 300, a big event, everyone turn up their best, and there was the 300K bonuses um, thrown out in this too. Um, I only saw that, uh, we'll get to it in a minute, but the BMF, uh, title fight got a uh, fight of the night. Mm, yep. um, I'm not sure if anyone any knockouts or any other bonuses were handed out. You might have to, you might say right there at the bonus awards. Uh, five, yeah, yeah five of night was BMF, BMF, and, BMF and then and performance of the night was for Max Holloway and Yuri Prashaka. Yeah, so so they got 300k as 300. well. Yep. So yeah, um, I wonder if he gets du- he gets double up there, old Holloway, yeah, getting paid. Would um, I split the <laughs> fight of the night or uh, maybe. maybe 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 yeah. true. Um, but yeah, getting some money out of that one. How'd you uh, go with Dan Hooker? Who, yeah. uh, yes, he did break his arm against um, Turner. Uh, Turner, yeah. There you go. That seems like it's gone quick. Yeah. Time flies. But back yeah, to quick. Holly Holm, uh, the perennial gatekeeper. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, well, I saw the jokes about, you know, Ronda will be disappointed that Holly Holm got beaten with judo in this one because <laughs> <laughs> Harrison judo tossed her on the ground essentially uh, and then finished her off with his submission. Um, like you said, look very big for this division. Very, very strong. Uh, there is a video of Amanda Nunes waiting for the call out in the in the post fight interview with Rogan, but nothing came. She just was. She said she was excited, happily um, retired. Yeah. Well, no, no. Nunes is coming back. Oh, is she confirmed? Yeah. yeah. So Har- Harrison said, you know, she's um, excited about being in the UFC, uh, looking for a title fight. Uh, so she will shoot up the rankings and 
yeah, could definitely move her way into that title fight contention. The storyline is, you know, if you follow what's the script as have been written, is that Harrison will go away, fight for a title fight, win the title, and then get Nunes as, Nunes the, as the, the return fight. So that's uh, – I think Nunes is a bit disappointed that she wasn't called out out of this. Um, she's expecting to be heard, but she was like, hey, if you're not going to call out the GOAT, that means you're worried. So is Nunes confirmed wants to fight again? I believe so. I believe that's the case. She's already talking about coming back. She's a – they have uh, John Farnham retirements, these fighters, don't they? Yeah, well, <laughs> UFC 301's coming up and Josie Aldo, um, Josie Aldo retired a year or so ago. He's fighting on the card, he's coming, coming back. back so. It is in Brazil. Yeah. yeah, it is in Brazil, so that, that adds to it. But, um, yeah, it's – well, I think, what, Holly, I think, was 44 or something like this, 40-something? Years of age. Yep, in this for this fight. So. Not 44, surely. She's getting up there. Or she She'd be 40, I reckon. 42. Yeah. Wow, split middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think she did any retirement and things like that, but she's been around for a hot minute. But okay. still fifth in the division. Like She's still a big name in that division. Yeah. And then we went into uh, Ama- Aljamain Sterling taking on uh, Calvin Cato. And probably what was the most boring fight in this because um, Sterling just wrestled the shit out of him. Yeah, just sat on top of him. Mm. It was the most boring that I watched, that's for yeah. sure. But, but, you know, he's coming up, Wade. He's, yeah, he's fought, fought it smart. Yeah, fought it smart. Um, Calvin is very dangerous on the feet. Uh, but do what he had to do. I don't, you know, wasn't getting any three three thousand k bonuses in this. Uh, but yeah, he wins it. Yeah, you know, sets himself up in the middle of that featherweight division. Um, uh, there's not a huge amount of challenges currently, sort of floating around in featherweight. So there's definitely a, a path there to a potential belt uh, title fight in the not too distant future for him. From one of the more boring fights to probably the equal least boring. Oh, such a war. <laughs> Yuri Prohaska uh, <laughs> defeating Alexander Rakic. Rakic absolutely paced him in uh, in some of uh, those early well, exchanges. The leg kicks. He was, yeah, that, yeah. That, left, kicks was that left leg in particular mm-hmm. was really struggling to put weight through it. Uh, and well, that, also, his fa- like he took a bit of facial damage mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, but all the means is Yuri doesn't give a fuck. He's... He's, he's so tough, man. Not a samurai, but has a samurai mentality from the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, there's actually a video of him last night at midnight outside the fucking arena just zoning in. So, really? Yeah, Yuri was here. He, <laughs> he's on the comeback trail. He wants, you know, a rematch. He wants a title fight. Um, and I think Radic looked huge, uh, but his power just didn't worry him at all. Like any of the big shots he did throw – uh, that landed didn't really worry Yuri. He kind yeah. of could fight through it, and then the, his difference in power when he was landing was evident. Um, and yeah, when he started landing some of those big bombs, and they were happy, um, you know, just go teeing off on each other. Uh, he just had the, the the bigger guns and blew him away. I feel like that's more of a Yuri's chin thing than a Rakic's power thing. Uh, I think Rakic. Oh, he's still Rakic, power, but I think he's putting most of the division mm, to sleep with some of those shots. Yeah, connecting. True, true. But I, I feel like Yuri my just well, from what you saw, he looked like he was landing a bit more evident shots. But like you say, uh, that could be because his chin is just elite. Into the main event, mm-hmm. uh, well, well main, the main, card. main card, I should say, uh, leading us into the main events. Uh, mm. Bo Nickel uh, goes six and zero in the UFC uh, with his win uh, there against Cody Brundage mm-hmm. via submission in. The second, second round. round. Yeah. His longest <laughs> fight, I think, in the UFC was two minutes 50 or something like that. So he finished yep. everything in the first round. Uh, he himself was a little bit disappointed. Um, yeah, very disappointed. He gave himself the thumbs down. down yeah. Because, uh, you know, he wanted to put on a big show, blow him away and mm. get out there. But credit to Cody. He, he wrestled pretty mm. pretty well in this, defended as much as he could, but uh, eventually succumbed to the pressure and the submission. Um, yeah. It will be... Bo Nichols on this NC, it'll be a challenge when he gets to more qualified wrestlers, comparable wrestlers, as he moves up through the division. Um, and, you know, when that gets nullified, what's he like on the feet is the big question. He said, uh, uh, he's such a nice guy, but Rogan asked him who, who would you might like uh, upcoming. Mm-hmm. I think he said Anthony Hernandez, Hernandez. who does have that fight, uh, but it'll be around about that sort of 12, 13 ranking. Yeah. Uh, that Bo Nickel uh, should yeah. get in the next. Yep. Yeah, sneak into the rankings and start moving his way up. <laughs> What's Hernandez? Is he? Th- I think he's uh, 13. If 
from memory? He is 12th. He's 12th. 12th at the moment. So who's around there? Uh, he's he's got not getting Hamzat. Hamzat, poor Craig. Well, Hamzat yeah. was uh, getting after him on the socials about... Really? You know, Had to be a huge th- fight. Yeah, that wrestling ain't shit yeah. um, was mm-hmm. what he was saying. But uh, yeah, it'll be... Um, I don't think you'll get Hamzat. No, no, not anytime soon. Um, rounding up the top 15, you've got Chris Curtis at 14 yeah. and Chow... Chris, I think, just lost as well. So. Parallo. Parallo mm. at uh, 15. We'll get him Hansen. He's in 10. Be interesting to see what happens. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Lightweight, Charles Oliveira and Armin Sarukian. Uh, Sarukian getting a split mm. decision win in this one. Maybe the most controversial uh, yeah. decision in the night. Uh, what did we think? Uh, I think it was close. Split decision... I, I think, think in I, this one, Armand definitely won the second. Uh, I think it was probably coin flip for one and three. Yeah, uh, yeah. The crowd's probably not super happy if the crowd's anything to go by. No. Yeah. When did he cut Oliveira? Was it in the first round or second round? No, second round. Second second round. Did yeah, in the that's second when he was really round. pissing out of his, yeah. Out yeah, of his yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like the submission attempt in the first that was really close was probably the better visual, so I felt like... Well, Oliveira finished round one and round three on top. Yeah, but I think he was he was more de- dominant in the first to end mm. that. Um, so, and I feel like the first round they would gave it to him. And I think that's all the judge scorecards had one round to Oliveira at least, and mm. I think it would be yeah. the first. And then there was a third was kind of the coin toss because he did get you know the wrestling, the grappling was kind of back and forth. Um, and I think I said it to you guys: does the visual of how that fight end mm. sway this a little bit? Yep. And, you know, there was one – it was a split decision. One went Oliveira. I think it was pretty close. Um, I just don't think – from what I saw, I thought I saw more complete um, uh, martial arts out of Oliveira. And if I had to pick of, like, who would I least wanted to fight out of mm. what I saw from those two, it was probably what Oliveira was doing. I, th- I felt like he seemed more dangerous both on the standing and then even on the ground through his grappling, whereas I thought Amand – didn't really do a lot with it um, mm. outside of landing a couple of elbows, which then split him open. Uh, I just didn't see, see en- enough. Um, but, you know, I might also be a Charles Oliveira homer as well. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think uh, visually I thought Oliveira might have just got it done for me. Monks, mm, yeah. uh, do the stats suggest any anything else? No, yeah, the stats definitely do sort of lean more towards Armand. He had more total strikes. He had the two takedowns versus none from Oliveira. Oliveira mm. did have a lot more, well, had all the submission attempts at four. Mm. Um, but and two real deep ones as well. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah. is the age old, you know, where to striking versus, you know, ground control and submission yeah. and, um, sort of attempts or going very close to two submissions. Yeah, because like, like a, a yeah. you know, does a deep submission attempt like those count as like a knockdown? Mm. Um, you know, where, yeah. where do you kind of rank them? Like, for me, that's what I'm saying. I felt like he was more dangerous in this fight. Yeah, I, I, agree. I, I was. Yeah. I, I, that's you know, I'd be more worried about going up against that than yeah. than um, you know, having a man just sit on top of me for yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah, no, definitely. So crowd definitely not happy. Uh, probably wouldn't you know be that upset if you did have Aman winning that fight. Mm. Probably the most contentious decision of the uh, of the evening and. Uh, Probably just needed to be a five round fight, really. Like yep. Given yeah. how how good they were f- uh, from a cardio perspective, uh, you've made pro- a lot of fights on this card. Five yeah, rounds. probably <laughs> deserve two more rounds. That one. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yep. Um, and I don't think Charles did anything to th- kind of lose his momentum in this. Nah. He'll still be up near the top of the division, um, but yeah, he can go away and uh, see what he can do. Have a bit of. Um, well, I'm just thinking. Because uh, no, Aman's not getting the, the Islam fight, so he's not getting a title fight anytime soon because that Dustin fight's now booked. Um, so, and with Gaiji losing here as well, because I think he's ranked second or third, um, you know, these are the other guys in that top mm. four. So uh, there's not a lot of dance partners. So, you know, maybe a Charles, uh, Justin Gaiji kind of fight makes sense for those two. But yeah, does Aman now wait for the winner between Islam and Dustin? Like that right? Lightweight is stacked. Like that, yeah. that top five. <laughs> like you got killers. You got current killers. You got future killers. I think Arman is probably going to get there. He's still pretty young as yep. well. Yep. Mm. He's definitely got that on his side. Uh, but yeah, you look at who's ahead of him in uh, Emporia Geishi. Uh, Oliveira will obviously drop down, and then the champ is Islam. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible at the top of uh, the lightweight division. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I don't know how you'd slot Max Holloway into that conversation either. Mm. No. Yeah. 
how high up is he going to go? Mm. Yep. Well, that I was. Mean, there's also you got Connor. Yeah, I don't being thrown into the mix. Potato. Did you see yeah, that interview fun. last week with Connor talking about the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal? And he which one? Oh, he, 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 some interviews is all over the place. Some, some interviews some is all good. On. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple that he didn't look great, but I also don't know how much it's just. Connor. <laughs> 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 well, that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see where yeah. uh, Connor fits into it. Yeah. Well, you know, he's booked against. Ch- well, that's the thing that has been announced that he's been booked against Chandler. It's mm. All right, down. Was it 306? Yeah, it's a, it's a while so. away, isn't it? Uh, 303. No, it's. Oh, it's that's, June. Not, that's it's not far. June. Yeah, that's only two months. Mm. Yeah. So booked in for June. And that Dustin Islam fight I mentioned before is 302. And the co-main for that's going to be Strickland and Paulo Costa, which is also very mm. fun. Yeah. All right, let's get into the uh, mm-hmm. the belts. Yeah. So the baddest motherfucker belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Gaethje uh, goes down in an absolute war uh, to Max Holloway, who I don't think I've ever seen this in the UFC. Gets a knockout with two seconds left in a five-round fight. Uh, definitely didn't yep. need to knock him out. Uh, was definitely ahead on points. Yeah, Four one and pointed down at the canvas. Just wanted to throw bombs he for the last ten seconds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's a pretty standard Holloway thing. Yeah, let's it? fucking go at the yeah. end. But and uh, just caught him and uh, and put him uh, to sleep, yeah. which is no main feat. Putting uh, one of the most violent men in the UFC to sleep uh, at the you know twenty fourth point five eight mm-hmm. seconds uh, you know mark of a fight. Incredible yeah. stuff. Yeah, definitely, mm. and uh, I think a note for any – it's it's quite interesting because he kind of lulls the fighters into it because, mm. you know, no, if Holloway points to the ground with 10 seconds to go, you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but as a fighter, it's like well, – That's who Gashi is. But he, yeah, he's exactly. not going to back down. Exactly. No, as yeah. a fighter, you're like, if I say no to this, then I, you know, <laughs> yeah. am I the coward? And so you have to participate, but it's just not a good idea. No. <laughs> especially, especially in a gunfight. And it's just like Max a testament Holloway. to Holloway's cardio. Like – he, oh, in speed, he like, barely looks like he's he's yeah. like his he's, speed g- he's gas, but yeah, his speed is still yeah. crazy. Because that was always a concern coming up in this, and like when he fought Dustin on, I think like four weeks' notice, um, you know, he, he didn't have to cut, but he didn't really have the right weight for it, and mm. uh, and got beat up in that fight really by Dustin. Um, but I don't think he was kind of as prepared. Like he had a full camp for this, he looks big, but he looks big in a good way like he looks yeah, like a, and he, like a lightweight and he could and throw he threw on all this weight and didn't seem to have lo- yeah. lose a step in his yeah. speed yeah he, and you know he probably doesn't have the power that transitions as well into the lightweight division but if you're fighting five round fights with, with him like he's gonna wear you down you're gonna get touched a lot mm-hmm. he's got the most significant strikes in the ufc for a reason because mm-hmm. he hits you over and over and over again mm-hmm. and eventually that's you know that's not going to be great for you um, and what was interesting in this this spinning back kick that well uh, yeah the spinning back kick that he added into this um, he threw it multiple times especially towards the end of the fight but the mm. the big one of course was the end of the first round where he broke his nose. clearly broke Justin's nose um, mm. and Gadgie's had I think multiple nose issues and had surgery to to fix up like clear his airways mm. um, yeah. yeah so I think that played a big factor in it there was a couple of eye yep. pokes in the second round but by the end of that I, I think it was a pretty competitive fight with. Max just being so crisp and so quick with his hands and uh, proved it in the end with a massive knockout which left Justin face down on the canvas. Yeah, absolutely put him to sleep. Holloway deserves to be a UFC champion again, hey. Oh. Like, and we're all <laughs> yeah. big Volk fans here, obviously, Aussie fight fans. Uh, but if there's anyone that deserves to be a champ again, it's it's Max Holloway. It's just Oh. That's, that's 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 so crazy. It's going to be fast it, like we yeah. just we've just watched it again. And In ten seconds, they throw about thirty punches mm. each, and yeah, the last one, well, it's literally the last one, the big right hand over the top just nails him on the chin. Gagey doesn't see it at all, and nine no, night. No. That'll be one of the biggest UFC highlights. You highlight. will see that for yeah. the next yeah. 10, 15, 20 years. Like, you, yeah. Look at the crowd. Yeah. And I they, mean, they it, will show that over and over again. And that's got to be something Holloway trains because you look at it, it's it's not just he's in the middle of the. Combos, man. Yeah, it's yeah. combos. It's yeah. not just swinging. He's, Can you imagine he's sparring this guy and training? This <laughs> <laughs> is like, bro, all right, we're, we're going to do the, the one minute session where we just stand in the middle, bang, no, and you. see what happens. I'd be like, 20 kilos bigger than him. <laughs> no, thank you. No. He's, yeah. he's one of those it's technical. It's these uh, strong combinations. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, yeah, and like the BMF belt's perfect. Yeah, for, rec- two, for well, recognition for yeah for him. Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe he doesn't have a championship belt. Maybe he's not going to 
like I don't see how he can beat Islam because mm. I just feel like Islam would just wrestle the shit out of him because he's just so much bigger than him in mm. this division. Mm. But hey, you never know. But uh, the likelihood of winning that championship, it's unfortunate he ran into Volk in Volk's prime and had did. three absolute wars with yeah. him. Yeah, and uh, arguably could have been the winner of one, one of those. those. Yeah. yeah, so um, – but you can't dismiss that he's one of, if not – you know, he should be on your list of pound for five best fighters Yeah. Um, mm. in this generation purely just because of what he's done. Like, yeah, maybe he can't win a belt, but also he's beaten every single other person you've thrown in front of him. Uh, Volk's really the only other guy that's beaten him. Yep. Um, in what well, beaten him a featherweight and Dustin the one time he took it. Well, Dustin and is Dustin the only light one because he fought a lightweight before when Khabib Khabib fell out, and I feel like that was a Dustin fight. Monks will um, chase it up. That was his only other loss at lightweight. Yeah, yeah. But that's like Poor that's Ed. that's it. And you look at that list. Aldo's on that list multiple times. Yeah, Oliveira's Anthony on the list. Pettis. Where, you know, Cubs Swanson. Um, actually, yeah. did he lose? He lost to Connor as well, ages ago. Then when Connor That's was right. hot and he he was still learning, and of course lost to Dustin very it's very fucking early. ten years ago. Yeah, <laughs> nearly eleven years ago. <laughs> so wow. you know, yeah. But I think the BMF title, and you know, like you said, being standing there in the last ten seconds, th- winging away. That's how you become the baddest motherfucker, and that's recognition that le- legit he is. Yeah. And he said, "I'm happy to fight anyone in this for this belt across any weight class. If you want it, come get it." So you know that's crazy. And then of course he called out um, Ilya. Um, you know, out. Yeah. He was just like, "Hey, yeah. Spain, Hawaii, I don't care. Let's get that done." Um, I think um, uh, yeah, whether the Volk rematch or Holloway's number one there. Uh, otherwise, you know, where do you slot him into? The, the lightweight pitcher. He just knocked out number two, I think, ranking. Yep. And number yep. one just lost. Like, yep. that's a more fun fight for, to sell for pay-per-views than um, Amman we just talked about. So, mm. um, yeah, there's good few good things for, for, for Max and, you know, he put on an absolute clinic in this one. Dupuria doesn't, like... He, he, he looked worried. Like, yeah, he looked he's either like, worried or just was he's not just like, interested. very oh calm God. or, I don't know, has yeah. a good poker face. But, yeah, to me that looks like a bit of, mm. oh, shit. Like, <laughs> is this what it's like being the champ, yeah. hey? Oh, yeah. Just yeah. have everyone gunning for you. Mm. Yeah. Well, you saw the reaction from all the fighters in the crowd as well. Like, like oh, holy shit. Yeah, every, everyone. It was, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've seen Volk and Israel's reaction. Like, it's, yeah, crazy. Yeah. It was a have, hard, have Mark H- Coleman throw the belt around you as well. It was a pretty big moment too. Bloody so. earth. Mm. It was a hard act to follow, really, for the girls. Yeah. Uh, unfor- a bit unfortunate. Unfortunate, yeah. but it's the way that it plays out in these huge... Stadium cleared out a little bit. And it was yeah, a few a little bit quiet. A few bit went to the bar, but uh, yeah. it was still a, uh, a, a co-main event and it was still for a belt. Uh, mm. So women's strawweight, Zhang Wei Li against uh, Yan uh, Xiaonan um, yep. for the first all-Chinese title fight. Mm-hmm. It went the distance, uh, but definitely no controversy in, uh, in Zhang. Uh, in the result, uh, yeah. it might have been with. Uh, well, <laughs> when this when the fight should have stopped? Yeah, after end of the first round, um, she's out. Uh, just let that, yeah, let it yeah. let it play. Um, yeah, it's a question of she was good with six to go, five, uh, five, four, four three. three. She's two, not moving a whole one. lot. And well, she does roll it over, but yeah. And I reckon Zhang's on there for another second as well. That's yeah. where the ref probably needs to be a little bit more. Yeah. I think the main thing is she, it. I think the ruling is she stood up. Um, mm. If she'd she stayed. She stand up quick, yeah. 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 No, if she'd stayed down, they would have called the fight. Um, but because yep. she got up and I guess regained herself, they're like, okay, she's wasn't 100% out. Her airway but was certainly she com- looked, certainly compromised. She looked all over the place. Another was, three seconds, and that's that's the fight's done yeah. in the in the first round. There, exactly, yeah. quite li- credit, literally saved by the bell. Yeah, credit to her. She got a couple more knockdowns for the following mm. rounds as well. She definitely had the power that um, struggled, uh, worried Zhang, but uh, as a champ, she did what she needed to do, and that was um, ground pound the shit out of her, um, get the takedown she needed, lock up the good positions. Couple try a couple more submission attempts, but um, I'll mm. keep the position. And you know, Jan really didn't have a, a, the skill set here um, to be able to um, get the win. Where does uh, Zhang Wei Li rank now all time for Straight, girls? Yeah, hard to, hard to say. Oh, just for girl fighters, I, I would say. N- Nunes ahead of her, obviously. She, probably Shevchenko ahead. She's in a bit of a tough division as well. Yeah. Like, um, Andrade's just now moved up and uh, after she won the belt from her. But she's gone back and forth with Rose, and Rose is a big yeah, factor in this division too. So, um, 
Would she, you, you have a top five female all time? She'd be close. She, she'd be. I'd say she's more on the back end. Like top. I think you got Nunez and Bullet uh, probably sitting at, at the yeah. top of that at the moment. Cyborg back in yeah. the day. Yeah, of course. Cyborg answered that conversation and. Uh, you know, you give Ronda some props for yeah, what she did. Yeah, like she was the biggest on, name in the sport for, you know, sure. a little bit there. But yeah, I think, so to speak. Yeah. Um, Joanna as well. Yeah, um, Jedra Zane. Yeah. yeah. Was dominant champion for yeah, a very so long time. So. Top five is probably hyperbole. Top yeah. ten is probably yeah. where she's like, at. She's on, she's on the ascendancy into that conversation. Yeah. Um, uh, will, you know, needs another long, good title reign, I think, to, to go to go through. Is that three defences for her? Uh, yes, I think that was the case. Uh, she has lost the belt a couple of times, so she's defended she, she, once and won, and there, then lost, lost it to Rose. Didn't get the belt, then got it. Keep scrolling up, yeah. and then yeah. she got it back against From Esperanza, and, and then defended and has defended twice, twice against yeah. Lemos. And so yeah. yes, three total def- three total defense, two on the current reign. Yeah, I think mm. you're right. I think she probably needs a few more notches on the belt to enter that sort of top five mm. sort of goat. Female sort of status, yeah. but uh, definitely uh, entering the conversation. Yeah. So when did uh, go down? Go down. When did she win the belt? Uh, two thousand and four. Yeah, and then, no, one, one, then one, two, two three, four. Keep going. Two thousand fifteen. Five, and she had five defenses there before losing it to Rose. Pretty impressive, bro. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. Joanna that we're looking at there. Yep. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Just seeing who else was. Mm. That makes sense. In the I, mix was like, for the I was like, Shang hasn't been around that long. <laughs> 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 but like, yeah, you know, Rose is there. You look at Rose's record. Yeah, she's Rose. also been back, you know, jump back and forth. Um, Bullet is, you know, is the other big name there. So, yeah. I hope time will come, definitely. And if she yep. keeps this track, she's a tough challenger in Yarn. Like, mm. full credit to her after that first round. But um, she fought a very f- smart fight out of that and dominated. For sure. All right, let's go into the big one. The big one. Alex Pereira, uh, Poetan, Stonehands, coached by Glover Texeria, who Jamal Hill had uh, had a bit of history with uh, winning the vacant championship mm-hmm. uh, back at UFC Glover. 283. Unfortunately, had to vacate uh, with the Achilles, Achilles tear. Yeah. Did you see how he did it? It was playing basketball. Yep. Fucking just a scratch match of basketball. Mm-hmm. Crazy uh, how the world works. Uh, but that was in July last year. So about a nine, ten-month recovery from Achilles. Reasonably quick, uh, but sort of there or thereabouts for elite athletes. Uh, and the scariest man on the planet, I think, at the moment, Alex oh, yeah. Pereira, uh, did what he does best and uh, put him out the first round. Yeah, of... And uh, full full credit, like uh, pe- like we said, I think leading into this, uh, people were about bitching about the UFC UFC three hundred and their main card, you know, not being the sell point. But I think uh, Alex is like the head of the UFC currently. Like he's he's got won two belts, defeated like four cha- former champions, had multiple knockouts, all mm. in like a twenty four month space. Like his ascendancy and his domination um, across two divisions is is bananas. Um, and he uh, again show, showed it here, showed his dominance. I think also showed his level of striking capability in mm-hmm. this. Um, I think I was telling you boys, DC picked up on it. He mm. throws the left jab to the body. Um, he did it about five times, and then on that fifth one, you see he'll lower his like arm and shoulder, to, to, you know, to try and kind of deflect a little bit. And then he get and Hill does that, and then follows it with the leg kick that, that uh, hits him on the cup, and he says, "No, Herb." <laughs> I've got him right where I want him. <laughs> how how <laughs> fucking gangster was that? Yeah, because he'd he'd seen it. He'd seen um, he'll like try to block the. He'd set him up. He's mm. he's just like, hey, he's done exactly what I want him to do. Lean down a bit. So the next time he throws a left hand, um, Hill's hand goes down just the slight little bit needs to be, and that left hook is just lightning quick. Knocks him. He doesn't even hit him with a full fist and just knocks him the fuck out. And um, uh, yeah, the last thing he wants is then. Uh, pull it down on top of you, dropping massive hammer fists as well. Mm, and yeah. Hill was out, out. He had no idea what happened after mm. he stood up after that because um, he got the, the shit beaten out of him. So, yeah, it was uh, definitely, again, kind of showed his talent in this level. Um, and uh, I was uh, definitely very, very happy um, with the re- result. You know, pull it down, stand over here at the end of the table. Uh, Post match. 
hard, obviously, going through the translator, but you could hear him say Brazil about six mm. times. Mm. Mm. Is there a chance that he fights in Brazil in a month's time at heavyweight? Could it happen? Well, if he, he said if, if I don't get, um, don't get hurt in this one, mm. then, yeah, I, I want to fight at it. Um, and uh, besides, I think, like, two right hooks and some low kicks, like, he very – didn't get hit really a whole nope, lot. Nah. Some concern about maybe he dislocated his pinky toe a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, but outside of that, there was – there was there was not a lot in it, so um, uh, yeah. And if heavyweight makes sense because he doesn't need to cut any weight, he just you know, is like, hey, just give me a fight and I'll show up and let's fight in Brazil, which I think is what he wants to do. Is just like just put me on the card. I don't care who the fuck it is. Doesn't you know the talk is you know put Tom Aspen in there, but I don't think Tom's going to turn around in four weeks and want to fight. Yeah, well, it's not really fair. On Aspen, <laughs> or is it to, to have to turn around and, and take yeah. him on in Brazil? Yeah, no, nah, I, I think it's. Watch this left hand. Oh, it's, it's kind it's of like an uppercut, uppercut as yeah. well. Like it's not quite a hook. It's not quite an uppercut. It's and you're right. It's not range. the f- it's not the full fist either. Yeah, it just hits him hard enough on the chin. Um, and, and then yeah, new meme format there with the, like, why are you bringing this? And, you know, mm. what is this like? Mm. Yeah, this this isn't this isn't my challenger. Um, so uh, he's scary, man. Scary. And uh, we're talking about the power cube. Um, Nagano had the record for that of one hundred and thirty thousand. For a long time, and a lot of people can't get even close to that. You hit it one hundred ninety thousand. So, how does that? So, what's that measuring? It's like force. force. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the because it's not something new phys- to me. There's something physics, physics related. Yeah, but uh, there's obviously some calculation that, that figures out how the power cube mm. um, does it. But yeah, uh, and what he went higher than Engano's by a good sixty thousand, twenty five percent or something. Yeah, oh, more, wow, more than that. It's fifty uh, percent um, increase on it. Um, so yeah, Dude's got power in his hands, um, and um, got his black belt after the fight. Uh, not a not a dude you you'd want to face. Um, so yeah, yeah. Whether, whether they just give him a fun fight with a machine head, gun <laughs> <laughs> from from very far away. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Engano's seven year record for hardest punch ever was finally broken. As two weight UFC champion Alex Pereira showed off his astonishing power, yeah. the hardest punch ever landed. Yeah, call it one hundred and thirty thousand units. Mm. And then where did he go to? His punches are equivalent to ninety six horsepower. <laughs> That's equivalent to getting hit by a Ford <laughs> Escort. Yeah, one hundred and ninety one. <laughs> one hundred ninety one thousand. So you're right. Yeah, it's it's not quite double, but it's yeah, call it two thirds. Yeah. Incredible, incredible power to think that someone could be that much more powerful than Engano. Yeah, like, yeah, it's bananas to think about the, the punching power. Mm. <sighs> Obviously, you know his shoulders, his joints are just built different to yeah. generate the speed and power, and he, he's obviously got ginormous lunch boxes for hands. Yep. So, How big. Um, yep. yeah, not not a dude you want to be in of a punch. But whether they they make that heavyweight fight or not will be very very hard to say. You'll have to wait for medical clearances, but you'd think you'd get through that with flying colours. Yep. Uh, mm. And then who are you, is the crazy, the heavyweight crazy enough to want to step in with him? Mm. Yeah, especially if he doesn't have to cut. Like he was, he was two hundred and thirty two pounds uh, this yep. this morning before this fight. There's video of that too. Him standing on standing on the scales. How he ever made one hundred and eighty five should be studied for science because <laughs> his man is a freak. Um, uh, who's, who's give us a look at that Aspen? Like, um, there's been rumors about um, uh, gain, um, uh, dodging, dogging, not dodging, dodging, mm. um, not dogging, dodging, <laughs> dodging guys. Um, I don't think fuck, I'm going through that list. If I put two in there for shits and giggles, <laughs> don't do it, should we? Yeah, hey, yeah, that's yeah. No. yeah, I think a lot of those dudes on that list, maybe Derek Lewis. Make some sense, but yeah, a lot of those guys would not want to want to do it. Not kind of risk their spot. Like Stepe is not going to do it. Um, Volkov maybe, yeah. but I don't think that's kind of a interesting enough fight um, for Brazil. <sighs> yeah, um, watch this space. Not, there's not, yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's going to no, happen quick if it happens. Is Almeida yeah. uh, Brazilian? Like yeah, yeah, and he's, that, yeah, he's a uh, Brazilian. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> He, he's oh, hopeful. why? Like, why would he he take that on? Do you know what I mean? But I'm saying, like, in that list, he's the only Brazilian is what I'm getting mm, at. Yeah. <laughs> if they root, he's just like, don't pick me, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. 
yeah, anything else. I like think it's going to be t- yeah, it's got to be Tom Aspinall or yeah. Cyril. Because I know it's going to be high. End. I know there was conversation about that. Tom Tom had uh, leading into UFC three hundred about who's going to be an opponent because um, Tom couldn't really fit someone together. There had mm. been rumours about who Paul Tam was going to step up and fight for the interim belt. Um, so, you know, there is that conversation, but I just think the four-week turnaround just means it's not going to happen. Mm. Uh, yeah. Plus, they already have a main event for the flyweights uh, on that card. Yeah, well, um, kind of rains on their parade too. Yeah. Don't it? But having said that... Which features an Aussie. Which it does feature an Aussie, but having said that, the UFC uh, would probably want a big-name card to add well, to it's, that. It's kind of underwhelming yeah, card. But, yeah. Outside of, you know, Aldo's return on that card, mm. I think the big concern is, you know, the flyweights just don't sell. Mm. You know, it is what it is. They just don't sell. Um, there's a reason, you know, Mighty Mouse is, should be arguably one of the best fighters mm. on hist- in history, but he just doesn't get his props because of the division he fought in. Mm. Um, yeah, which, you know, is disappointing, uh, but it's just, it just is the way the things are. So is there any heavyweights on that card? No. There isn't. So Need a heavyweight fight. No. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Oh, is a uh, sister fighting on this card? Where are you looking at? Well, I saw a Michael uh, Michelle Pereira, which is um, I swear is his sister, um, and then I, but I can't see her name in the top list. It's announced by about middleweight. Mm. Uh, that could be a bloke, dude. Uh, oh, I could be completely wrong. Yeah, I think it's a dude. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, it's a. It's yeah, he is, yeah, former. <laughs> nope. He does, she does say, he does have a sister that is also funny. I've just done prayer and go, woo! <laughs> uh, she clip that and send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, aren't you Alex Pereira? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, All right, I think that'll wrap us up. Uh, yeah. F- f- yeah, thoughts overall? Awesome card. Awesome card. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Ha- card. Happy top to bottom. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. I, th- I think it returned on your investment. If yeah, you buy on buy it met expectations. So, yeah. like, That's a good uh, point. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say you'd be disappointed with the results of what you watched. No, no. There was yeah, some really good fights in that. Yeah. And yeah, BMF. Mm. All 10 knockout. Sick fight. Yeah, yeah we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's keep rolling because we've still got a little bit to get through. Oh, uh, we, we, don't have a, we don't have a golf sound, do we? No. Do you want to try and make one? Uh, What's it? <laughs> That's that's me breaking my <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just five minutes or, of expletives or, or slicing it way up into you know three fur ways over so yeah I'll give you one it's uh, Zach Johnson <laughs> fuck off <laughs> <laughs> all right <sighs> Masters Augusta does it get better no. no weather delay not the best for the mm-hmm. golf but pretty good for us viewing down under because it meant that it was they're you know a bit they're playing a bit later on on Friday morning for us. Bryson and Scotty Scheffler started off pretty well. Then the win really picked up in second round, made it very difficult. Uh, some big, big names uh, not making the cut, not getting through to the weekend. So a few mm. uh, former uh, major winners in mm-hmm. Wyndham Clark and um, Brian Harmon missing out, likes of Victor Hovland, Jordan Spieth, yep. Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson and Zach Johnson, who uh, definitely looked like – Told patrons to fuck off after a triple <laughs> bogey. Uh, understandable from uh, what oh, I would think. I, th- I think they were giving him a bit of ribbing as well. Yeah, I suppose. If you're at Augusta, yeah. you've got to be careful with what you said. Yes. Uh, he came out and said that he was saying it to himself, which <laughs> 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 you look at the video and you decide. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some massive names to not make it through to the weekend, but a, a big name that did, did was Tiger Woods. Incredible. It's 24 times in a row at Augusta that he's made it through to the weekend despite his body literally breaking down and it have showed it really showed today have you seen it you know they the cameras catch everything so he's t- his back is taped up to all shit like yeah. they've, they've got all sorts of things to try and get him through and you see him taking uh, what we assume is painkillers um I, I like to wish that maybe it's smelling salts and he's, he, he's like <laughs> oh, I'm good let's go <laughs> um, uh, but you know they're definitely Doing everything they can to to keep him going and get him through through rounds. Um, uh, the question is how. And like, he's still playing excellent golf. He's still getting getting through the cut. Mm. But mm. Um, yeah, how much longer have we got uh, of Tiger before he needs a good rest? Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see how good he can still play and the fact that he's back. Well, <laughs> through the first two rounds, like you know, it was 
with just all the young mm. blokes that we just mentioned, mm. uh, you know, couldn't get through the weekend and Tiger did, but I think mm. the repeat efforts of having to play. Yeah, well, uh, his round three. Yeah, he shot 10 over and obviously, you know, a bit of wind and um, and that playing into it. But uh, it's pretty incredible the fact that he made the cut in the first place. Yep. Mm. Monks, you had a leaderboard there. Uh, so do. Max Homer uh, is up there. Colin Marikawa is up there. Uh, didn't mention them because they sort of came a little bit later. Uh, and Cam Davis for the Aussies as well. So run us through, so top ten. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Scheffler's up number one. Marikawa's number two. Homer's One three. shot behind and then Homer shot behind that. Yep. Uh, and then Oberg yeah. is four under. Four under. DeChambeau, as you mentioned before, is three under. And then shut the bed a little bit, so yep. shot three over yep. today. Um, Shafeli. Yep, Shafeli is two under along with uh, Davis. And then who we got there? Holgaard at two under. Uh, Cam Smith there or thereabouts. Cam Smith there, one under. Yeah, there's a lot sort of there sitting tied ninth there. So Who, who's, real who's, your betting, who's the betting favourite going in the last week? Scotty Sheff. He's got a one-shot mm-hmm. lead. He's playing incredible golf. He mm-hmm. only got, has the one – I say only has the one major. The way he's been playing over the last few years, he probably deserves to win a few more. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. So he'll be the man to beat. But it uh, wouldn't be a fun night's sleep, I'd imagine, going into a Saturday having a one-shot lead at Augusta. Uh, yeah. In terms of, like, realistically winning it, oh, he'd probably go four strokes back. You'd probably say – Shafeli and um, Deschambeau still have a sniff. Cam Davis is, you know, Aussie fans, but pretty hard to, to catch up five, I think, sort of super realistically. Maybe it's just Chef, Morikawa and Homer. Mm. Stranger things have happened on Sunday, that's for sure. Oh, well, yeah. Bit of uh, news about the uh, balls. It's not going to happen anytime soon, but uh, they want to essentially roll back what's legal for a golf ball moving forward. It won't come into effect for the, at least the next sort of four years, but they want by mm. 2028 uh, the balls to be not travelling as far, essentially. Uh, so uh, as it stands, about 90% of uh, of the balls would be illegal if they do change the rules. Yep. Mm. It's kind of a watch this space. There might be a bit of a pushback uh, against it, uh, but it's essentially um, trying to reduce the distance in the air that some of these uh, modern balls can, yeah, well, can carry. I think they've been saying that the average for uh, the Masters is usually about 7,000 yards um, for the course, and they're uh, at, at almost 8,000 at the moment. So they've had to extend the course, of course, with all the big hitters to try and – uh, make it more challenging, yep. uh, I, I guess is the way. And I think, I think they said yeah, it turning par fives into par threes essentially is, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. not quite. But yeah, I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. See what you mean. It's, it's yeah. uh, not many of them are having to get out the fair wood, fairway woods. Yeah, so yep. a lot of them now just go on those par fives, driver, um, iron. And then they're uh, on the green. Yeah. So they can yeah. putt and then, yeah. yeah. So they're eagling the par fives much yeah. more frequently than what yes. they used to. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I think it, I can't remember if the chairman or president um, of the club said, I think it was last year it was 7,500. This year, 7,600. And mm. he never wants to go to 800, 8,000. 8, 8, so, yeah. um, but they, because yeah. not just like this course might be able to do it, but there's lots of other courses that can then then can't extend as well because yeah. you know, they don't They're have the real off, stuff. Off, off the back tee boxes yeah. as it is. Yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, there is some of that of like how do we longevity of golf, but I also think, it's, you know, you're just getting the bigger gel to men, you know, there's more, uh, say, sports science getting into golf and they're just, you know, big hitting is probably here to stay um, instead of trying to, uh, I guess, bring it backwards to embrace it and then make the other parts of the game chip more challenging mm. or um, it's kind of yeah, big hitting is only step one like you still have the short game and you've got a yeah. putt so you know, uh, it's not like Bryson's going out there and yeah. winning, he's not winning winning major after major <laughs> winning, yeah. although he's playing pretty pretty good yeah. here in the Masters yeah. I think a reasonable comparison is the cricket bats in in yep. modern cricket and mm-hmm. how they've put limits on mm. the thickness and, and yep. yeah it's certain things there because yep. obviously it's very different to what they used to be yeah but uh, they but nev- I, they never went to a point where they like oh it's actually going to go backwards yeah you know what true. I mean they just yeah. kind of capped the uh, the rapid yeah. progression of yeah. it mm. but he, even saying that like, Bison's probably hitting balls further than anyone else can so it's so clean yeah yeah um, just because you know you're just getting those bigger physical specimens into these sports. Yeah, um, I think it's a watch this space. I don't think anything is in stone just yet. But mm. if they, I'll talk if, about it. 
if they pass the the proposed uh, um, ball rollback, yeah, like ninety percent of the current balls won't be um, up to scratch. Yep. Mm. Let's finish with a little F one, and uh, obviously Masters will play out in the morning. Bastian Fettel. So we had the Japanese GP over last weekend, uh, mm-hmm. again dominated by Red Bull. They finished one two with Max winning, and that man science uh, yet again with the guy without a job finishes third. Uh, only the only one really of Ferrari kind of I guess challenging. Um, all the other teams uh, really haven't taken the next step to be able to compete with Red Bull yet. I know a bunch of them are going to be doing upgrades leading into the next race, which is next weekend. Um, but I can't remember where. Can you double check that for me, Jimmy? Uh, but outside of that, they've confirmed next season will be 24 races, which I think actually might be less than this season. Um, but the big thing for us, of course, is Australia goes back to being the first race. Um, uh, they're going to kick it off. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, traditionally, Australia's been the first race for a very long time. Uh, but the last few years. But because of COVID, yeah, it kind of um, killed that off. Mm-hmm. And uh, they've been sitting about third for the last two. Uh, but then they've gone back to the traditional start in Australia, uh, which is uh, very good for us. We get to see all the cars to start the year. Um, but that's the big news. Uh, where are they next, GP? Uh, so they are in China next. Uh, um, yes, yes. That makes sense. We, Japan to China. Yep. Uh, it is a 24-round season this year. Ah, okay. So that's uh, it. And then, yes, it'll be 24-round next year. Mm. Starting in Australia, then it goes to China, Japan, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so makes makes a lot more sense. Less travel, yeah, yeah back yeah. and forth, coming starting in the Middle East and then having to come, come to Australia yeah. and then go to Asia. Yeah, they do still have that US Miami GP in May, and then they go yeah, back around the world and then come back to do their US tour. <laughs> yeah. later on in the year, so <laughs> still not that you know people blowing up Taylor Swift about yeah. her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> emissions. But she takes a private plane to get it. from a lounge room to the kitchen to get a snack. <laughs> so um, uh, anyway. Uh, so the only, only other news out of, say, Japan was the big crash um, from Ricardo hitting Albon on the first corner, which is unfortunate for Ricardo's chances uh, at the mm-hmm. moment. He's been struggling for form of late, uh, but also for Williams, you know, trying to protect that car, protect the chassis, getting yep. another big shunt into the wall is exactly what they don't want. So, yeah, you know, a bit of bit of a unfortunate there of all around for Williams and yep. Ricardo. Uh, and then we finish with Alonso, um, which well, is actually just on Williams as yep. well. Sergeant, he crashed his car during f- uh, free practice free and well. banged it up pretty bad as well. There mm, were yeah. concerns that they were going to have one one car <laughs> one again, yeah. but they're um, really struggling at the moment, which is <laughs> interesting. And then Andretti has just opened their uh, F one base in England, um, and they're looking to employ about a thousand people to to build out their F one team. And they say they're going to have an engine ready by. I think 2027, they said. So, you know, they're not an F1, but they fully plan to be. Uh, they might not have made it this time around, but they maybe will be added in the not-too-distant future. Um, so, finally, Alonso, uh, which is big news, has re-signed with um, uh, Austin Martin there that they will – he will stay for Aston the foreseeable – Yeah, Aston Martin. Um, he will stay for the yep. foreseeable future. I think it's a two-year deal – um, but it also has um, uh, potential for – because he's in his 40s. Actually, maybe Alonso is the 44-year-old. That's what I was getting confused with. Yeah, that sounds, sounds a bit wrong. Right. Because uh, Alonso is getting up there in years, so that probably see out his racing career and then move into a role um, with them as, say, consultants going forward, um, which big news – uh, rules him out of, say, the Mercedes and Red Bull seat. So there had been conversation about, mm. you know, if Max goes here and um, with Lewis already going, who's frees up? You know, Alonso is still a very good driver, especially as the second driver trying to build a car. Do you like, put him in there? Um, so it's those sorts of conversations, but he's now locked down. Um, so, you know, Sebastian Vettel, some conversation about maybe he wants mm. to get back in F1, mm. could walk yep. straight back into that Red Bull seat Vettel if they wouldn't want. be that old, would he? No, he, no, he's younger than Alonso yeah. is mm. by, by far. So, you know, he's, he's, he could definitely come come back and do some racing. Um, but then they have the young fella who is Andretti, Mario um, Andretti. Yep. Uh, who's, I think, 17 at the moment. Uh, who? Oh, that wouldn't be. A, no. no. No, Andretti's the old driver. 
Oh, sorry, no. No, yes. Yeah, I, I know who you're talking about. Uh, he starts um, with, his first name starts with an M as well, doesn't it? Uh, you guys are the F1 guys? Uh, the young Italian. But uh, looks like he could potentially just walk straight into that Mercedes spot. You got a name there, Jimmy? Uh, I'm finding it. His name's uh, Mario Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's that's uh, largely it for the F1 uh, news. Is that him there? I mean, Andrea, Andrea Antelli. Antelli. Antelli, there you go. Yeah. Antelli. Uh, the combination of the both. But, yeah, he might roll straight into the Mercedes seat. So some movement yep. um, happening around there. You know, Bottas is whether he keeps his seat. Same with um, – um, what's the Chinese driver's name? Zhou? Zhao? Guan Yu Zhou. Yeah. Uh, you know whether they keep together there at the um, kick sub or whatever the fuck their name is. <laughs> um, <coughs> but so far, dominated by Red Bull. Um, hopefully, Ricardo can do some good. Oscar's been pretty good actually. Yeah, he's been right, Aaron's, yeah. But yeah, they're all playing second fiddle at the moment to Red Bull. That Lewis for the app, big app. Uh, thank you for those that are. Two hours 40 deep. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, a massive UFC 300 did not disappoint. Bit of footy. NBA starting to heat up. IPL's mm-hmm. right in the middle of it. Soccer's at the pointy end. There's always plenty to talk about. Mm-hmm. And the big thing to talk about for us, at least in the coming weeks, will be the NFL draft. We're going mm-hmm. to do a mm-hmm. live show. Uh, didn't get to do it last year, but we did it the year before, and I think maybe the year before that. Yep. Always a bit of fun. Watch it all unfold mm-hmm. live. We're, Sean's definitely been doing lots of study for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really uh, gets gets him going, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, me and you better start reading up because we've only yeah. got 10 days, 11 days, uh, something like that. It's Friday week uh, for us, Thursday night over there. So we'll do a live show. Uh, obviously, a lot of uh, Aussies will be working on the Friday, but catch it uh, in two weekends' time uh, on mm-hmm. uh, wherever you get your podcasts. This is on the Esky. Thank yeah, you. Well, I was just going to say on that, no mock drafts because – you know, that top 10 could be anything. Who knows with all, yeah. all those yeah. trades It really could be going, anything so. and going to be... Very exciting. Looking forward to it. The most quarterback wide receiver heavy draft in recent Ooh, memory. Yeah. Mm. Looking forward to it. Uh, Going to have big implications for teams, big implications for fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're pretty close to that. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. Uh, hopefully you're having a good one wherever you are. This is On The Esky. We'll see you for the NFL Draft. Bye. Bye.